Okay, I'm gonna call the regular meeting of the City of Bellflower City Council to order Monday, September 26, 2022 at 7 p.m. Roll call, please. Councilmember Hamada. Here. Councilmember Coops. Here. Councilmember Sanchez. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Santinas. Here. Mayor Dutton. Here. May I have everybody arise at this time for the invocation led by Mayor Pro Tem Sonny Santa Inez and the Pledge of Allegiance by Lynn Gorecki, our uh, Assistant City Manager, Public Works Director. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life, the gift of family, the gift of community, especially the city of Bellflower. We thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We are so blessed. As we meet tonight, please remember those who serve the city. We thank our staff for their service to our great city. We thank our members of our military and our first responders, police, fire, and paramedics for keeping us safe. Please remember those who are homeless, who are hungry, who are sick, who are unemployed, or otherwise struggling. As we meet tonight to discuss the important business of the city, please guide us, enlighten us, so we'll make the best judgment for the sake of our city. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Amen. Place your right hand over your heart, address the flag, and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll move on into city council announcements. <clears throat> I'll start. The 2022 Bellflower State of the City presentation will be held next Thursday, October 6th at 1130 a.m. at our very own main event center. The State of the City presentation provides an overview and update on city, city's recent accomplishments and future goals. I am excited to share that amazing process that we've had this past year and what is to come. For more information regarding the event, please call 562-804. 1424 extension 2267. Mayor Pro Tem Sunny Santa Inez. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. The Bellflower Volunteer Center is now coordinating the holiday food and toy, toy drive for local families in need. For Thanksgiving, they are seeking canned goods and gift cards. For Christmas, they are seeking canned goods, gift cards, and gifts for children. Gifts can be dropped off at the Volunteer Center were purchased online using the Amazon wish list. Monetary donations are always welcome and appreciated during this time of the year. Donations are due by November 1st. For more information, please contact 562-804-1424 extension 2331 or email mnavarro at bellflower.org. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Santa Inez. Council Member Victor Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good evening, Bellflower. The Bellflower Chamber of Commerce will be hosting its monthly morning mingle tomorrow, Tuesday, September 27th, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. The Chamber is also hosting its Trick or Treat on the Boulevard event Friday, October 28th, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the Town Center Plaza. For more information, please contact the Bellflower Chamber of Commerce at 562 Eight six seven one seven four four. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Sanchez. C Councilmember Dan Coops. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Are you a Bellflower business owner or operator who has something special to celebrate? Have you received an award preparing for a special event or recently remodeled? If so, share your news with the city's economic development department by emailing economic underscore dev at bellflower.org. In addition to being featured in the E-Citizen, the Economic Development Department will begin a small business spotlight every month. Business owners will receive a one-minute feature video to appear on cable channel 36, the city website and social media. To apply for the spe spotlight special, please call 562-804-1424, extension 2249. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, 
Councilmember Coops. Councilmember Raymond Hamada. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let's see. Um, look at these. You know, Southeast Los Angeles County Workforce Development Board is, is providing up to 500 hours of work experience or vacational training, resume assistance, cover letter assistance, and financial support for tools, transportation, et cetera. To be eligible, let's see, applicants must be 14, that's hopefully correct, and they can start them young, uh, to 24 years old and be able to work in Cerritos and surrounding cities. To find out if you're eligible, please call 562-484-5027 or 562-484-5000. To learn more about their program, please visit their website at www.selacowdb.com. All right, okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All right, we're gonna have a presentation by uh, the Compton College presentation. And uh, we have uh, Keith and Juanita from Compton College to provide an informational update on Compton College. And when you're ready, the floor is yours. You're welcome. Make yourself comfortable. Okay, um, thank you, um, and good evening, uh, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members, Staff, and Residents of Bellflower. Um, good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to present with um, to present you guys tonight. Again, my name is Juanita Dopplemore. I'm the Board of Trustee for Compton Community College Area Four, along with myself, Dr. Keith Curry, and I'm the President and CEO of Compton College. Thank you. Next slide. Um, so we'll just jump right in. So here, um, this is a, we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, back in May of, um, of 2019, we had um, our former First Lady, Michelle Obama. She attended um, a college signing day on our campus. We're real excited uh, about that, and that's like one of my favorite slides. Next slide. Um, just to give you um, an overview of Compton College at a glance, um, Compton Community College is um, the 114th California Community College and achieved, re achieved its reaccreditation in June 7th of 2017. Um, the Compton Community College serves the following cities, um, Compton, Linwood, Paramount, Willowbrook, as well as portions of Athens, Bellflower, Carson, Downey, Dominguez, Lakewood, North Long Beach, and Southgate. Currently, we offer 40, 41 certificate programs, um, 42 degree programs, and for our 2020-2021 stats, our student population was 6,621 students. The next slide, continuing on, we offer 456 degrees that were awarded in 2021. We have 15 certificate awards that were also in that same year. We had 184 associate's degree for transfer students that were awarded in 20 of 21. Some of the most popular programs, of course, is business administration, administration of justice, childhood education, nursing, psychology, and of course, our certificate programs uh, that we're very proud of is air condition and refrigeration, auto collision, repair um, and painting, automotive technology, childhood education, cosmetology, as well as the liberal studies. And this spring, we held our first um, post-COVID um, in-person graduation at Dignity Health in Carson, and that was a graduating class of those students for 2020, 21, as well as 22. Continuing on at a glance, our budget um, is $74.2 $74 million. The beginning revenue, the campus sits on 88 acres. We have 229 full-time and part-time staff, and our district serves 307,229 residents. So if you get a chance, just our budget, our budget information, which is public and available, you get to see what our beginning balance was for the previous year and what our revenues for the state were for this year. We're a fiscally sound organization providing services within our community and serving residents of Bellflower. 
just give you a, a, a look at our enrollment. In actuality, our enrollment has been declining uh, due to our partnership with El Camino College uh, ending in 2019, and then COVID happened. And so right now, our goal is to try to build back our enrollment for our institution. Uh, but if you look at our numbers right now, as of today, actually last Friday, uh, our numbers were 0 0.7, which is our full-time equivalent student funding from the state of California. We're actually, as of today, we're at 0 0.1. So this will be the year that we will be similar to what we were last year, which is really good for our campus and our, and our organization. Just to give you a sense of our demographics of our student population, you can see that Compton majority serves Latinx uh, individuals, and then also Afri black and or African American students as well. And you can see what's interesting about our data, if you look at 1516 compared to 2020, 2021, you see the Lat Latinx or Latino population continue to increase as the uh, African, black and African American population decline. And that's similar to what's happening with the census data. Just to give you a sense of some of our construction, we've been doing a lot of work. We just opened uh, in the fall of 2020. In the fall of 2021, we opened a $21.1 million state-of-the-art instructional building. We're in construction right now on a $25.2 million student services building. I actually had the opportunity to walk that building today. We're scheduled to uh, be completed this fall with the opening of January 1 of 2023. But it will be done this fall semester. We also have another instructional building number two, which is a $25.6 million project, which will be done in the winter of 2023. And then we have future projects. We have a $45.6 million physical, physical education complex that also includes a um, swimming pool on our campus as well. Uh, so we're really excited about this project. It's at, right now it's currently at the Division of State Architects uh, for approval as relates to the architecture for the project. Our goal is to begin construction sometime this year. And then we have another $13.4 million uh, visual and performing arts complex, which was currently in design, and this would be open for our students and also our community. So we're really excited about the construction projects. And the last piece of construction projects, we received $80 million from the state for a new student housing facility for 250 beds. It would be the first community LA. college in LA County that would have student housing. Okay, thank you, Dr. Curry. Uh, and continuing on with the, some of the basic needs that we provide for the students post-COVID, um, this uh, to ensure a safe return to students, um, safe return to in-person instruction, we um, offered a vaccination incentive of $350 for students to, um, to return to campus. We also have um, our St. John's uh, Health Center, which is on campus, which provide vaccination and also mental and health and wellness for students upon their return. Next slide. Um, on this slide right here, you see the grant distribution. This is um, some of the um, COVID-19 uh, health, health education and emergency aid that was, in, that was dispersed to students, as you can see, starting in spring of 2020, 2020 continuing on to spring of 2022. And just to add to the slide, this year we're giving away close to $3.7 million in emergency aid to students. This year alone. Okay, thank you. And continuing on to address um, some of the, the housing and food insecurities, what Dr. Curry mentioned earlier with the construction for um, the on-campus housing for students. Um, how we are addressing the food insecurity for students is that we have what is called every table, which provides a meal for students. Each student on campus, they um, can uh, they are eligible to receive up to one meal a day. Um, and for those students that are attending um, instruction online, they can also have a meal delivered to their home. We're also having uh, food delivery as well as partnering with the LA County Food Bank for, a few dis for food distributions as well as food pantries. Next slide, okay. Um, steps to enrollment. We have, uh, currently we have virtual and in-person enrollment that is taking place this fall. And the steps to enrollment, if you scan the QR code, um, first is to um, apply for admissions, which we encourage all of the students to do. Um, seek the financial aid and funding that's available for students. Students will also receive um, an orientation. There's also an, an educational plan review with their counselors to ensure their success um, and make sure that they're on a path for success as they um, return to two years in person and also if those students are looking to transfer. And of course, the last step would be to register for in-classes. And that's something that we encourage all of the students to do and to, uh, take part in. 
On the next slide is our Oliver W. Connor Promise California, Com California College Promise Program. Um, but for us, it's by the name of Col Oliver W. Connors. And Oliver W. Connors was um, an alumni and the institution received um, um, a grant or um, he left in his will um, to Compton College. So um, as um, out of respect to him and his love for the college, we named our California College Promise program after him. And of course that is for students that are graduating from our local high schools, they automatically get immediate enrollment into our two-year program. And there's um, just some of the, if you go to the next slide, Dr. Curry, um, some of the benefits to that. Um, the students, their enrollment fees, whether they are eligible for a Pell Grant or other aids, and this two-year program is eligible to students that participate and take up to 71 um, units with transferring. And then, of course, at that time, you can the students can tap into some of the additional um, financial aid that's available um, to students through the state. Dr. Greer, would you like to add to anything on that? No. I'm okay. Fine. Next slide is, um, of course, just continuing on with this, you can see the breakdown and the savings for students that enroll and participate in the College Promise Program versus this, the, uh, the semester um, fees for books, tuition, and just the, the true cost of attendance. And I believe that that funding that you see there, that is this, what the out-of-pocket cost for the 2616 that you see off to the right, that is the health and student um, government fees that the students would have to pay. Next slide, Dr. Perry. Okay, and last, before we can open it up to questions, is of course, again, um, our eight-week classes um, begin October 15th, so we are accepting enrollment, uh, whether uh, virtual or in-person, for students. And that is all we have. Um, we can open up to any questions. <clears throat> what a good presentation. Any questions? Do Juanita or Kevin? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Yeah. Go right ahead. Thank you. Uh, can you go back again uh, about the budget? Is it 43 million? Did what I did remember I say, correctly? 42.3, I believe. From the I must have misspoke a little bit. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's about 40 it million, right? Oh, no, that was the 74. But. So, oh, so 74, it's, it's 74, 74 million, which includes our unrestricted and our restricted dollars as well. And, and, so, and the population is about 6,000 students right now? Yes, and yes, correct. I'm just kind of extrapolating the numbers while you were talking. It's about ten thousand, eleven thousand dollars per student. That we see is state roughly. funding. State funding. It's sta so our and we didn't get into this is a little bit a little bit complex, but I can do it in a quick second. So our funding from the state is protected due to COVID nineteen, but more so about our separation with El Camino College. So we we have a funding floor. So basically, we're funded for a certain number of students, regardless of how many students we have on campus. And that goes through 2025, 2026. And that's some legislation that we worked on in 2017. So if you can run down, for just, just in, in global terms, so we get funding for about $11,000 per student from the state. It's actually, when you look at the funding, it's about $6,500 per student, per, per, per full-time equivalent student. The reason I'm bringing this up is because, you know, I'm not trying to compare this, but we're spending more money for prison compared to the students. I mean, it's just 6,000 versus, I think we we're spending about $100,000 per, uh, per inmate. So this just disparity, it just kind of irritates me that we're not, we're not investing in our kids enough to get them educated. That's, that's all my point. Um, and can, can you, uh, Dr. Kerr, can you educate me here when you said earlier that, or Ms. Doppelmore about yes, sir. Um, Compton College serving parts of Bellflower? Yes. Can you educate so, me on that? I mean, um, okay. So I'm in. So I'm in North Long Beach. So um, my particular area for Bellflower are the students that are we, um, the residents consider or they refer to them as Southern, right? Oh, so we're okay. on the Southern side. So Bellflower, that's on the on the South side of the 91 Freeway, right there between. Um, North Long Beach, Lakewood, and Bellflower, right? So all oh, of those I students. See, I see. So that pocket of students right there. And then there's also another section of students on the other side, on the northern side of, of the district of Bellflower that is served by um, Downey Unified School District. Mm, so you I have see. multiple school districts that you, um, um, for your residents, depending on what side of the on okay. um, the city they're on. Is because that I think for the most part, uh, most of the residents of Bellflower are served by Syracuse College. 
Sports. For the oh, I'm sorry. I was speaking of high school, but no, yes, college. also for my Let footprint, my footprint in North, in North, uh, in South Bellflower, I'm sorry. The footprint is for Compton Community College. Right, on the so south side. So your city has two community college mm. districts, just like the city of Long Beach. So my portion, of course, is Compton, and then the majority of Long Beach is served by Long Beach Unified School District. Ah, uh, I see. So, so you have a benefit there. Right. So is the funding similar to, let's say, uh, the school district where you get by based on average daily, daily attendance? So, so it's, it's, it's a little, we, we are funded on full-time equivalent students. So okay. basically, the sh short and sweet part of this is basically looking at students' enrollment. So a full-time equivalent student is more so uh, taking 12 units. So you might have multiple students who are taking three units, one class. If you have multiple students taking three, one, three unit courses equals 12, that's one full-time equivalent student. And so for one full-time equivalent student, we get about $6,500 full-time mm -hmm. equivalent student funding from the state of California. Oh, I see. And then you also mentioned about, and I just... Want to put a plug here? Uh, you mentioned about every table. Yes. We have every table in Bellflower. <laughs> yes. It's on the northwest corner of Bellflower and Alondra. Bellflower and Alondra. So, so we're averaging about 420 meals per day, uh, and it also includes our employees. And we have we are funding this program for the next three years. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, I'm very impressed with your program, especially in nursing, because I have friends who went to your nursing school, mm -hmm. and they were very well educated. So thank you so much. Yes, thank and, you. And, and finally, can you explain to me um, the, the College Promise program? Is it only for one year or for the whole, It's for two years? It's for two years up to 71 credit units, right? It's, for two, it's a two-year program that's for students who want to make sure they get up to 70 units, but it's a two-year program, uh, free, free college. Uh, but you also understand when you talk about free college, we also want to look at the other uh, expenses that students have. Like we're paying for their tuition, but there's also other expenses, and that's why we, we do a lot of work in basic needs to make sure the students have that support regardless of housing and food insecurity. So what are the expectations of the student to kind of maintain that, on, let's say, on their second year? Do they have to maintain some kind of grade point average? or It's not based off a of grade point average, but it's based off of the number of units they take and also fill out the application during their freshman year, during their, prior to their freshman year or during their freshman year. Okay. Or Wonderful. the first year, say it that way. Wonderful. Okay, thank you so much. <clears throat> thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, Council Member Hamana, go ahead. Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Yes, hello. How, Hi, Juanita. Uh, again, we know each other, so, but also, again, Dr. Curry, well, again, thank welcome. Um, yeah, this, this question about, um, you know, service area has always intrigued me because mm -hmm. Bellflower, I, I believe, could be served by four, four college districts, actually, possibly, the Compton, on the, some of the west side and south, south side, uh, uh, Cerritos, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I know a lot of kids that go to Long Beach City College. Yes. And then the kids in the north that go to Downey Unified Schools maybe go to Rio Hondo, mm -hmm. the possibilities. So, uh, uh, again, uh, you know, thank you for being here. Uh, again, the, you know, this one is always uh, wondering how the city got divided up like that. And, 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 uh, but it's, uh, again, you know, again, opportunities. And I just want to thank you for being here um, and, uh, you know, providing this information. Hopefully uh, we could... Uh, Get the other college districts out here too to to convey their uh, uh, you know uh, again opportunities that uh, will you know benefit our kids here in town. So uh, again, thank you for all you're doing, and uh, uh, you know best on on those endeavors. And uh, um, yeah, we'll 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 take care of our kids. Yeah, I think there's a lot of us who are really stepping up to uh, uh, you know address the needs. Yes. Well, thank you, Councilman. Again, thank you. Great. No further questions? Oh, Victor, go ahead. Mr. Mayor, sorry about that. Just a question came up. Um, well, first off, welcome. Uh, thank you for being here. Just a quick question regarding, um, do you currently, does Compton Community College currently have a partnership with Belfar Unified School District? No, we do not. But I think that's something we need to look into as we move forward, especially for the portion that we serve. Perfect. And maybe Mr. Hamada can, can connect that, connect those dots. We're trying. <laughs> again, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, again. Uh, uh, I I think I was the one that encouraged the start, and again, uh, uh, again after meeting Juanita and and uh, you know talking about it more and just seeing the opportunities. Yes. I, I think uh, again, uh, this 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 community needs needs to have at least that on the table, at least as an option. Mm -hmm. So, and, and again, because 
we get uh, carved up here. Uh, yeah. You know, some of the students can't make it. To, you know, between the again other districts, but uh, again, there's an opportunity at at Compton College, and we definitely want the kids to take advantage of it. And we will follow back up regards to the Bellflower Unified School District. But I, one thing I throw out there as, as a recommendation, if you're interested in coming to the campus, the campus is beautiful. Uh, if you're interested in coming to the campus, going on a tour, I inclu inc including our packet is, is our my business card. So we set you up with a campus tour, and you try to every table at Compton College as well mm -hmm. on your campus tour. But it's a beautiful campus, and the construction, mm -hmm. Uh, you don't see too many community colleges having this much construction that's basically funded by the state of California. And so the state of California has invested a lot of money into Compton College and Compton Community College District because of the good work that we have been doing over the last couple of years. And so without Trustee Doppelmore, I don't think we'll be where we're at now. And bridging this connection today with, Bell, with the city of Bellflower is, is helpful. If you have any other suggestions of how we can increase enrollment or any other ideas, suggestions about programs, please let us know. We're always open to new ideas. Yes. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you, I got Mayor. a question. Thank oh. you. Uh, yes. yes. Currently, how many Bellflower students do you have enrolled in your college? You know, I don't know that answer to that question. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have to, I was thinking about that on the way here today because mm -hmm. our eight data for our trustee mm -hmm. area number four is just disaggregated by the whole area, but not by the zip code. So what I would be able to get back to you tomorrow is by your zip codes, mm -hmm. how many students are enrolled at the Compton now, College. I'd be interested to know. For the last five years. So we have a baseline as we work forward. Yeah. So I will send you a copy of the our report card that we have for Trustee Area 4, but also we're going to break down the data for Bell, the city of Bellflower for the last five years. No, I was especially interested in the courses you offer, hands-on training, air conditioning, auto body, fender, plumbing, electrical. All that things are sometimes put aside, but it looks like you've provided a place for them, and that's very important. Thank you. Now, it, it used to be, and I assume it's the same deal now, even though you live in Bellflower, you can elect to go to any junior college in the area. Isn't that true? Correct. All right. Mm -hmm. they, students have, they have open access, community college, open access institution. But no, no other community college is offering what we're offering. We talk oh. about free Wi-Fi laptops, Wi-Fi hotspots, food every single day. They're not offering the amount of emergency aid that we're providing to our students. Competent College is at the forefront as it relates to providing support for our students, and those resources have been allocated for that. And so our, our goal is to, for you to help us regards to encouraging, telling students more about Competent College, but also about the resources. But we will provide that data as well by tomorrow. And it appears, or it sounds as though, you even provide a food service for the employees and staff. Correct. All the employees and students are able to eat every single day, uh, Monday through Thursday. Uh, it's one of our, our signature programs because we have been able to find the niche. When I mean niche is, and most colleges have not been able to do that, of how you can be able to provide food every day. But it's our partnership with every table. We were able, we have a sweet spot regards to the amount it costs per meal. And, and employees and students have options. And every day, students are in there picking up their meal uh, their free meal each day. But it's, that's how you address housing food insecurity, is by really attacking the problem and make sure that's available to our students. You mentioned a couple of times a relationship with the El Camino College that had changed. Can you explain to me what changed? So just for, for history and, and for some history buffs that are, that are in the room, is that Compton College was the first community college, a Compton Community College was the first community college in the history of California, community colleges, who accreditation was revoked in 2005. Uh, and so from that revoke, we got into a partnership in 2006 with El Camino College to provide uh, educational services at our campus. Uh, we became accredited again in 2017, and we separated from El Camino College in 2019. The reason why that's significant is that we anticipate that we're going to have a decline in enrollment due to the transition from El Camino College in 2019. However, we did not predict the COVID-19 pandemic. So we had a double whammy, as they would say, mm -hmm. regards to our decline in enrollment, because we already knew we were going to have a decline in enrollment because of partnership, and then we had decline in enrollment due to COVID-19. So did the <clears throat> diplomas read... El Camino College, or yeah. did they read uh, Compton College? At, at that time, it read El Camino College, and now they read Compton College. And all the courses you take, uh, if I take a course at your institution, that will put me in the right place so that I can go on to a four-year college? Yeah, we are accredited college, and the courses and units that students complete are able to be on their transcript and are transferable to four-year college and university. Do you give letter grades or pass-fail? We... In actuality, we give letter grades. However, some courses do have pass-fail option. Okay. And you're on semesters or on uh, quarters? We're on semesters. However, 
in our semester, we have a 16-week courses that are offered. We have 14-week courses. We have 12-week courses. We also have eight-week courses that are offered throughout the semester. So we have different section, different um, opportunities throughout the semester for students to take courses either in either one of those uh, terms. Historically, Compton College always fielded great teams, athletic teams. You didn't make any mention of that tonight. Do you still have all those great programs? Yeah, we actually do have all those programs, and I'm really excited about our football team. Uh, we're 2-2 two and two this year. Uh, we, won, we had a two-game winning streak, and then we just lost this past weekend at West L.A. College. But we have a plethora of sports that are offered. And since 2010, we have added women's volleyball. We have also added women's soccer and also women's softball. So we've been adding sports as we move forward, and we're one of the first community college who has an esports facility, which is a whole nother presentation regards to the movement as ways to esports. But we have an esports facility on our campus. With the new pool coming, I suspect you're going to have a swim team. Uh, not just swim. We also got individuals asking for water polo. Oh, okay. Wow. And learn mm -hmm. to swim during the summer. Oh, you're so going to have that availability that's too. That's my request. For the community. Yes, for the community. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you for answering all my questions. You, it's a treat to have you here this evening, and I think we're all impressed with what you're offering there because we don't know unless you tell us. Yes, absolutely. But we're going to, like Mr. Amata said, I think that uh, we need to partner with you on getting some of our students that are graduating from Belfire mm -hmm. and Mayfair and the surrounding areas to come to your institution and find out what a true gift it is. Yes. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Well, thank you. Great presentation. Okay, public comments, Mr. Stewart. Yeah, this is the time set aside for the public to address the City Council on matters not listed on the agenda. Anyone wishing to address the City Council should come to the podium, state your, be recognized by the Mayor, and state your name for the record. If you wish to address the City Council on an agenda item, you may do so by approaching the podium as we review that particular item. You will be given three minutes to address the City Council. Good evening, everybody. I'm Larry Weehage. I will not need three minutes. Uh, I just want to thank you for your support, allowing the Lions Club to coordinate with the city to put on another great car show that we just had this past Saturday. Uh, it was well attended, and I want to thank all the city council for showing up, being a part of it. Uh, we are set up for next year, October 7th. I've already got people locked in for spots next year. They are uh, going fast. In fact, the phone call I had earlier was from somebody uh, regarding the car show. Uh, so I just, again, want to thank you very much for allowing the Noon Lions to uh, coordinate that with the city staff. Thank you very much. And we'll look forward to you next year hosting it. Great job. Yes, sir. Now i got to go home. Okay. Anybody else wishing to uh, come up? Mayor, council members, ladies and gentlemen, my name is John Butts, uh, a local person here in, in town. I have a couple items. I still see you got your three-minute nonsense there, which is a slap in the face. But I've got a couple things here, and I would like to, to know on this city substation, along with the employees, what purpose does it serve at a cost of over a million dollars a year? And when I had to go over there a couple weeks ago to report a, some vandalism, they tell me, here's a phone number, call the Lakewood Sheriff's Department. So what, what, worse, what, what why are we throwing over a million dollars a year away on a stupid place like that and been doing it for God knows how long now? It's time to get rid of it. Now here's the other question. Street sweeper, I brought it up before. Why do we pay somebody to follow the street sweeper when you can deal with the street sweeper company and have the camera installed on the vehicle that takes the picture of the thing and sends you or whoever the deal to pay, pay the fine instead of paying another idiot that we have to hire, which is a waste of money. Now, here's another item, and it has to do with code enforcement. 
I was told they work on the weekend sometimes, but I haven't seen it. Uh, there's so many permits and business licenses never taken out. There's everything done on the on the weekend. I brought this up several times before, and I even have a picture this time of a very prominent person here uh, in back of in back of his building while they're putting a brand new roof on it, Mr. Coops, huh? on Saturday and Sunday of the 17th. So they're on Harvard no Street. No permit, no license, no nothing. Harvard Street. Now, our, our grand old code enforcement people, they work so hard. It's time to get rid of them and outsource that, too. So much money is being wasted and nothing being done by the laziness of a lot of employees that aren't needed. It's time to outsource. I, I turned this in over today. I stopped down here. But this is right in back of your place, Dan. I, well, on, I'm uh, sitting there on a Saturday and Sunday watching them do it. Real slap in the face. But it's not your fault. Well, thank you it's for the, not paying me. I didn't put the rope on. It's not your fault at all. It's, <laughs> it's the employees that we have here that don't do nothing. So thank you for your time. And uh, you yeah, I'll, I'll give you my 11 seconds. All right. <laughs> Thank you, John. Anybody else wishing to uh, speak on anything? Good evening, good evening guys. Uh, my name is Tenzin. Actually, I've just bought a property in Bellflower, hoping to do business. But the thing is, uh, you guys, I got a letter here saying that there's a new development happening on 17617. Bellflower, and what address? Said, Seventeen. No, this letter says that this this new property is going to be built at seventeen six one seven in Bellflower. My address is. Uh, you got a, a radius saying you were within so many feet. Yes, sir. I noticed. Okay. So I just bought a property on seventeen eight twenty. I'm a very small business person. I've been saving up my money for twenty years to buy a commercial property. I just ended up buying it. Now, I can't even get a permit. I came here to get a demo permit. They don't even offer a demo permit. They give me such a hard time, just very hard. So I don't know what to do with this. So you guys can guide me to yeah. the right place who I need yeah. to talk to. I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> I think what's happening, he bought a building, he wants to demo the building, and he's struggling getting a demo permit. We could solve that. I mean, yeah. if you just talk to Travis. I mean, it's your building, and you pull a yeah. permit. To no, I, I did come here many times. I'm, the people are really nice, but they really don't want to help. And I try to do everywhere yeah. I could. Do you a, have something, uh, plans for a new building there? No, I do not have a building. Uh, you I just, just want to get rid of the building inside. first. So I just did a demo inside, but they say you need a demo permit. So I came here to get oh, a demo Oh, you're not permit. demoing the building. You're just doing demo on the inside. Yes, sir. Got it. So now I bought this property in July. It's still now they locked it, so I can't even have access to my own building, like to do anything. They say you're not allowed to, or I get cited for that. Yeah, I think there's other things involved, like asbestos and stuff like yeah, that. We'll, but you you need to have a plan, though. Yeah, we can run. Yeah, I did have a plan. But, I had an engineer come okay. here too, just so they okay. can find them too. So, so get with uh, Travis here. Okay. Yeah, and he'll uh, have a little sidebar with you. And we'll see what we can do. Anybody else wishing to talk about anything? Okay, let's move on. Item 7A, Mr. Stewart. Yeah, this is the first public hearing tonight. It's consideration of possible action to conduct a public hearing to receive comments on the fiscal 2021-2022 Consolidated Annual Performance Evaluation Report, or CAPER, and adopt resolution number 22-57, a resolution to authorize the city manager to submit the fiscal year 2021-2022 Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report, or CAPER, to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. And we have two folks making staff report tonight. It's Jim Dallonga, who will, who will introduce Agnesa for you. Excuse me, Thank Mr. You, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Just a quick question. Yes, go ahead. Carl, uh, because of uh, my membership for the Board of Directors of Kingdom Causes, is there any reason that, that would prevent me from participating with the CAPER? 
because there's some C uh, CDBG funding that goes. Mr. Mayor, members, the council the, the council has a separate code of conduct, which is separate and apart from the legal conflicts. But I do believe the code of conduct requires you to recuse yourself if you're on one of the nonprofit boards that may be affected by the funding with regard to this. And I am. There so, you go, Mr. Mayor. I will okay. recuse myself. Understandable. This matter. Uh, Mr. Mayor, with that note, um, <laughs> now I'm kind of curious if I should be recusing myself too for sub for serving on some of the uh, of these nonprofits. I don't believe any funding has been disbursed yet, but since I serve, if if you're not if you're not serving on the board again, the city council adopted a resolution requiring members of the city council that served on a separate nonprofit corporation board that may be affected by funding okay. provided by the city to recuse themselves. Yeah. So I'll do the or same. or employed. Or employed. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Let the record reflect that Council Member Sanchez and Council Member Hamada are conflicted out of item 7A. Thank okay. you, Mr. Stewart. Mr. <laughs> DeLongo, go ahead. <laughs> Thank or Mr. You, Ms. Stewart. What do you yeah. <laughs> Forgot where I was. Thank you, Ms. Good evening, uh, Honorable Mayor and members of the remaining City Council. Uh, Agnesa Ananekian is going to present this. Uh, the staff, she, Carla, and finance staff have been working on this for a few months now and getting this all set for you. So I'm going to turn it over to her. Thank you. Um, good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council. Um, the City is conducting a public hearing to review and receive public comment on the fiscal year 2021-2022 Consolidated Annual Performance Evaluation Report, also known as the CAPER. Um, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development requires that the city annually submit a CAPER, which summarizes the activities and expenditures through, um, supported through the use of community development block grant and home investment partnership funds. Um, CDBG funds in particular are meant to improve living environments and promote economic development through job creation and services. The funds must assist low-income persons, particularly in blighted areas. Last year, HUD allocated approximately $938,000 in CDBG funds towards such activities. The activities included the Fair Housing Foundation, which provided their services to 207 Bellflower residents, uh, Kingdom Causes Bellflower Good Soils Program, which employed 30 residents, the Volunteer Center, which added a total of 15 new adult and student volunteers that served and benefited over 1,400 persons. CDBG also partially funds the city's code enforcement activities, specifically in CDBG eligible tracts. Last year, there were 439 code enforcement cases in these tracts. Also, a majority of CDBG funds are used for Section 108 loan repayment. Um, this was a loan, a 20-year loan, a 20-year, $7 million loan, excuse me, taken out in 2004 to rebuild blighted areas and promote economic development in the downtown area. The city is obligated to make annual payments using CDBG funds through the year 2024. The city also uses CDBG funds to pay for program administration and planning costs to ensure HUD regulations are met. And lastly, the city also allocated CDBG funds for a small business assistance program which was carried over into this current fiscal year. In all, approximately $898,856 of CDBG funds were expended last fiscal year. In addition to regular CDBG funds, the city also received supplemental CDBG CV coronavirus funds to prepare, prevent, and respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. Bellflower received two rounds of CV funding totaling $1.188 million. The city funded an emergency rental relief program, which assisted 64 Bellflower residents. In addition, CV funds were also allocated to food insecurity programs, including a homeless shelter meal program, which was able to assist over 100 persons with food, as well as a food insecurity program, which assisted 15 families with bi-weekly bi grocery pickup. The city has also allocated CV funds to a youth family senior services program and a business grant program. These additional programs are currently in process of starting up. CV funds are expected to be fully exhausted by year 2023. The city is also using CDBG CV funds to pay for, to pay for program administration. The city, um, excuse me, on a different note, 
The city also receives home funds from HUD. Home is meant to retain an increase affordable housing stock for renters and owners in the city of Bellflower. Last fiscal year, the city received approximately 359,000 in home funds. The home funds are allocated towards certain housing programs throughout the city. The first being the housing rehabilitation program. A total of five rehabilitation projects were completed last fiscal year. Home funds are also used for program planning and administrative costs. Lastly, under the home regulations, at least 15% of the home funds must be set aside for a project led by a community housing development organization, also known as a CHOTO. The CHOTO line item has been carried over to the next fiscal year in order to build up the CHOTO project fund to make a meaningful contribution to an affordable housing project. CHOTO funds must be committed by year 2024, or a portion of the CHOTO funds must be committed by year 2024. In total, approximately 184,000 was spent from the home funds last year. These are the primary accomplishments of the city CDBG, CDBG CV, and home programs this past fiscal year. The caper has been available on the city's website from September 12th through today, and the public notice was published in the Wave newspaper. Following HUD's review and approval, the caper will be finalized and posted on the city's website. Our recommendation tonight is to open the public hearing, take testimonial and documentary evidence, and after considering the evidence, adopt resolution number 22-57, or alternatively discuss and take other action related to this item. That completes my presentation, if staff has any questions. Any and questions to, no, any <laughs> questions to staff? The account? <laughs> <laughs> the numbers guy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, can, can you show, show the, uh, can you go back to the, I think the second chart. The, sec the home funds. The home funds. This uh, one. No, the, the second. Uh, oh, the second. From, from the first one. Uh, uh, before this. Oh, no, no. That's the one. That's the one. This there is the go. one. Okay. Uh, th this is quite impressive to me in terms of what, um, well, thank you for the presentation. When I was looking at what the achievement versus the goal, it, it is quite impressive. So uh, let me start with that. Because if you look at the numbers, um, you the, the city accomplished three times more than the goal overall. I'm just trying to oversimplify yeah. it. Um, so a couple of questions here. On the, the business assistance program, I thought we have something already in place for that, didn't we? Yes. Because it's showing zero. Correct, uh, but we did we have some uh, business assistance left over from the previous round. So we're rolling it over. Uh, there's going to be uh, some business assistance for the Bell Floor Center. No, but when I'm looking at the, the zero, didn't we achieve something? No, we haven't. We haven't given the grants for oh, the Bell Floor not. Center yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because we approved that for the Bell Floor Center. Correct. Okay. And they're not ready for them yet. So oh, we're just okay, wait, okay. We're, we're making sure they're ready before. Because we I think we're funding grants. about six of the uh, five five shops. Yes. Okay. All right. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. And the next slide. Next slide. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So, well, I guess the same thing with the business, business grant assistance. Going to be a similar thing? Correct. There is, there's, uh, the CV funds are also funding the $10,000 grants for, I think, nine or ten businesses and uh, two of the Bell Floor Center grants. And, we haven't, and we're in process on, on the uh, business grants. Okay. And, and when, is the, when is the deadline to basically uh, spend, invest the money? 2023 for CV funds. We have three years from the date that the funds were, um, agreements were signed from HUD, so we have three years to use at least 80%, and we have six years in total to use all the funds. Okay, so we have plenty of time. We have time. Okay, all right, very good. And then, uh, and then the, the next slide. Oh, no, yep. go back to that. The, the emergency housing assistance, that's a big chunk of money that is, um, is being spent. Uh, was that through the um, uh, kingdom clauses? No, the emergency housing assistance was rental assistance oh, through our okay. CV funds. Okay, so you oh. basically, it was done through staff? Correct. Okay, okay, all right, very good. And in the next slide. Okay, so the, the, the CHODO projects, I know we've been talking about this, and they mentioned that the deadline to, to invest the money, I don't want to use the spend, we're not spending, mm -hmm. we're investing, mm -hmm. um, it's 2024. 
A portion of the total funds, yes. What portion of that so needs to be? We have five years for from the time the funds were first um, allocated to the city to use them. So every year, so this is funds from 2016, I believe, or 2015. Or I have to, I wrap my head, I don't have the number in front of me, I apologize. Um, so it's kind of a rolling thing. It's rolling, a rolling, rolling thing. Rolling it rolls deadline. over every year. So there's only a small portion that has to be committed to an activity by a certain date, by 2024. So do we have any kind of ideas in the pipeline to kind of how to invest, because it's a big chunk of money. It, it is, and it's building up over the years, as you can see, and uh, talk about a permanent, uh, house, a permanent supportive housing project has been uh, bantered about um, recently, uh, but that's the only one at this time. Okay, all right. All right, so thank you so much. And, uh, and again, it's, um, I, I'm, very, I'm very impressed with the, um, with the outcome, with what you have done so far, and I look forward to continuing this, this, uh, this roadmap. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah I've got a, let's follow up on the Choto money, the 1.5. I thought you said it was gonna expire or a portion of it in 2023, but it's actually 2024. 2024. So right now, some of that money that's shown is 2024 is when portion of that will wash away unless we spend it? Correct. None of that money is in jeopardy cur currently. currently. No. Okay. All right, that's all I have. Okay. Mr. Mayor, Second. I'd like to make a motion to open the public hearing. Second the motion. Motion on the floor and a s followed with a second uh, for the opening of the public hearing. Without objection, that'll be the order. Anybody out in the audience want to come before the podium and talk on these numbers? Yeah. Not seeing any. Very exciting. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty dry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with entertain that, a motion. With that, I'll, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second the motion. And we have a motion on the floor and a second. Uh, without objection, that'll be the order. The public hearing is closed. What's your pleasure, guys? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion for the City Council of Bellflower to adopt resolution 22-57. And second. I'll go ahead and second it. Okay. Roll call, please. Councilmember Coops. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Santana? Aye. Mayor Dutton? Aye. Thank you. Someone can call in our colleagues. We'll, we'll get them. Yeah. <laughs> then I can go out. We're going out. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't think about that. Yeah. <laughs> Sunny again. <laughs> well, either buy property or serve on a nonprofit and you'll be out of here. <laughs> you got a simple life, don't you? <laughs> I, I like my life. Right, yeah. I understand. Yeah. Very yeah. simple. I don't know. You're a pretty busy man for being simple. <laughs> no, we didn't take anything away. Okay. Mr. Stewart, item 7B. This is a long one, so bear with me. Consider it as possible I actually conduct a public hearing to concern an application from Greg James of McKinley Malek Architects for a conditional use permit and development review and to adopt resolution number 20-060, a resolution approving conditional use permit case number CU21-03 for three restaurants with drive through components, a fuel station with accessory off-site alcohol sales for development on lots that will measure less than 1.5 acres and development review case number dr Dash six dash two one dash one two zero one eight to allow for the construction of five commercial buildings on the properties located at one seven six one seven through one seven six three nine Belfar Boulevard within the design for development for South Belfar Commercial Area DFD. Applicant is Greg James and McKinley Malik Architects Inc. And related to this is consideration possible action to conduct a public hearing to consider an application from Greg James and McKinley Malik Architects for conditional use permit and development review and to adopt resolution number 22-60. Same thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> hey, Mr. Coops, you wanna go first? All right, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna recuse myself from this project since I have property around the corner from what's being discussed. So I'll go to the other room as prescribed. And I also gonna recuse myself for having property within a thousand feet of this location. And I'm gonna turn the Chair over to Mayor Pro Tem, Sonny Santinez. Round right. of applause, please. Let the record reflect that uh, Mayor, Mayor uh, 
Danton and Councilmember Coops are, have recused themselves from this uh, from 7B of this agenda item. All right, Mr. Stewart. Ms. Corpus will lead it off. Oh, I'm sorry, Rowena. She is, we have a guest appearance tonight. We'll lead it off. So. That's okay. All Good right, Ms., uh, Mrs. Concepcion. Yes, sir. Okay, um, shown above is the aerial photo of the project site, which is uh, currently comprised of eight lots um, with a total area of about four acres. The project site is located along Bellflower Boulevard that stretches from Ramona Street to Cedar Street. Um, the property is uh, zoned design for development for South Bellflower Commercial Area, which is also referenced as DFD, with a general plan land use designation of C, which is commercial. So our request before you for the CP or the conditional use permit as for a uh, three drive through facilities, a development or the developments on parcels of less than 1.5 acres, and a fuel station via director's determination with accessory off site alcohol sales. Also, um, before you is the development review for the construction of five commercial buildings. Typically, development review is um, done administratively. However, because we have land use entitlements involved with this project, it needs to be heard concurrently. A um, lot configuration is being proposed, which would then create five lots, or rather reconfigure the existing lots into five uh, lots. Um, we have lot one off of Cedar Street, lot two, lot three, lot four and five would be off of Ramona Street. And What we have here are um, some of the front facade uh, rendering, colored renderings that would be viewed from, or that would be visible from Bellflower Boulevard. We have um, this front facade, which would be on pad one, pad two, pad three, and we have pad four, and pad five would be um, the one off of uh, Cedar Street, but this would also be facing Bellflower Boulevard. I'm, I'm sorry, Ramona. We do have a fly through of the project. So what you see is a um, center identification sign, that is only conceptual. Um, staff will be working with the applicant to come up with a more distinct name for the center. This is off of Ramona Street, and then off to pad number four, which would be occupied by 7-Eleven, which would be a fuel station with a convenience store. And you, this is approaching a one of the three driveways off of Bellflower Boulevard. This area right here is pad three, which would be occupied by Pollo Campero. And this would be second driveway off of Bellflower Boulevard. Um, there will actually be, as part of the city improvements, a median um, that would be installed along Bellflower Boulevard and there would be a left turn pocket that would enter into um, this driveway. You can also see that there are some trellises that are being proposed as well as some landscaping, um, uniform landscaping throughout the shopping center or the center. And this would be pad two, which would be then occupied by Sonic. It is a drive in and a drive through type of uh, facility. Um, both uh, pad one approaching would be on uh, Cedar Street. This is a multi-tenant building, also with a drive-through component. Both pads one and two will have a queuing capacity of 11 vehicles, and pad three, which is the Pollo Compero, would have a queuing capacity of uh, six vehicles. 
going around the corner now off of um, Cedar Street here. Up. Again, another um, center identification sign for the cent uh, for the project site, and this is the drive-through lane. Um, again, this is a multi-tenant building. Um, as proposed, there would be two tenants. It also incorporates um, outdoor dining area. It's actually pads one, two, and three incorporate um, outdoor dining areas. And we are now approaching a, the driveway off of Cedar Street. And we are, I'm fast forwarding it so that you can see pad number five, which, um, it, again, a multi-tenant uh, building measures approximately 8,000 square feet, as shown on the submitted plans, about five tenants. And leading out to another um, driveway off of Ramona Street. So in total, there's five driveways to access the site. And as you can see, there are uniform landscaping designs on the property, as well as um, trellises throughout. Trash enclosures, decorative paving um, are also some of the improvements that's on the property. Um, not shown here, but there's currently existing um, power poles on the property, and those will be removed, and the power lines will be undergrounded. And this is now the view from Ramona Street, which is the northern boundary of the project site. As you can see, there are some decorative paving that um, marks the pedestrian walkways. And this is the canopy um, that covers eight pump fuel pump station or fuel pumps for the 7-Eleven um, operation. So as part of the review of the project, we did analyze the drive-through facilities, and the site provides sufficient vehicle queuing for pads one and two. Um, for pad number three, it does have six uh, queuing capacity, and the traffic study concludes that the design of the drive aisle accommodates the number of uh, vehicles for that um, operation. Um, as far as the developments on parcels of less than 1.5 acres, the municipal code requires a conditional use permit for this, um, and the reasoning is the idea is to um, have developments that are larger, and although the property or the sub project site is being reconfigured to create five lots that are less than 1.5 acres, um, the project site is still being developed cohesively, and the use of the common area between each lot provides the appearance that the project functions as one large commercial and retail development, which then meets the intent of that requirement 1.5. Um, as far as the fuel station, um, again, a director's determination was um, made uh, this use, that the use is compatible with the general plan land use designation of C, which is commercial. And also, um, the operation includes a off-site, an accessory off-site alcohol sales. And I want to go into that. Um, before you are the census tract information or the census tract map that shows where the subject property is, which is right here. 
Um, it is located within 5544.04 um, census tract. Um, there are currently three offsite alcohol licenses issued and active on that, on that, within that census tract. Um, and the, upon approval of the project, this would, uh, would be the fourth site within that census tract. Adjacent to that is census tract number 5544.05. There are currently two active licenses within that census tract, one of which is actually being proposed to be transferred over to the project site. So although there is an increase of um, license on five, in 5544.04, um, the overall citywide there isn't one because it's just being transferred from one census tract to another. Um, the location is within a high crime area um, and the ABC or Alcoholic Beverage Control State Department would require a, a public convenience or necessity determination from city council. As far as the construction of the five commercial buildings, it is of modern design and it's similar to the recently built commercial buildings within the vicinity, um, such as the one across the street, the Buffalo Center. Um, as far as the traffic impact analysis, it was determined that there's no mitigation measures required for the project. Again, the city will be separately installing a future traffic signal, which would alleviate the level of service within that area. And that would be the intersection of Cedar Street and Bellflower Boulevard. Um, there are 132 parking spaces and five loading spaces proposed for the site, um, which exceeds the required number of parking. The zoning and general plan consistency, uh, it was found that it confirms with the city's general plan land use element and the zoning regulations. As part of the review, we did include or recommending conditions of approval that's included in the staff report, uh, uh, Exhibit A of, resolution, of the resolution. Um, this would ensure that the project as conditioned would um, comply or rather are required to comply with local, federal, and state requirements, which includes without limitations, water quality, stormwater requirements, and also providing electrical or electric vehicle um, spaces in the future. So, and this concludes staff's presentations unless there are any questions. Uh, thank you, Ms. Mrs. Concepcion. A uh, very informative presentation. And uh, just for your background, um, uh, this property is vacant now, has been vacant now for several years since Mr. Gold, who, the, who was the founder of um, 99 Cent Store, bought the property. So a lot of our residents have been asking what's going to happen to that property. And by reference, that property is on the west side of Belfar Boulevard between Ramona and Cedar. So it's basically the entire block of. Um, of Belfar Boulevard on from again from Ramona and Cedar. Um, just for clarification, can can you go back to the first um, first slide, Irina? Oh, no, there you go. The um, the plot plan. There you go. Um, in, in the uh, in the video, I noticed that there were there were trees along this side, but there are no trees here. Correct. Um, so. Which one is more accurate? Am I nitpicking here? Um, we did include a condition or approval that the landscaping plans also reflect those uh, mature, uh, the mature trees that's shown okay. in the rendering. Yeah, because on the, there, there's no there's no tree here. But on, again, on the video, this is line up with trees. Correct. All along. Okay. So there'll be more trees in the back because Correct. I think there's there's a uh, uh, this is a commercial property right now. So I want to make sure that there's some kind of privacy here. Because up here, recall, um, one of the issues when we built the dog park, where the residents were complaining about the potential noise. But uh, so again, um, potentially, this could be more noise being a commercial property here on downtown. We did include. Um the condition for that, uh, which would be condition number 22 on page 21 of the staff report. Okay. That essentially requires the applicant to revise the landscaping to incorporate additional landscaping in that area. Okay, specifically trees. We will make sure that okay. they are trees. I want to make sure of that because I, uh, I, I was very impressed with the video and then suddenly I saw this. 
All right, very good. Um, the, the, um, the alcohol license that you mentioned, the, again, this is for 7-Eleven, right? That is correct. So they're going to transfer from the east side of Bellflower to the west side. That is correct. All right. And then um, I guess I, I have to ask the applicant about this. Um, this are the questions that I, I, I have. Um, regarding, um, since there's going to be five, five pods here, um, I'm assuming that potentially uh, this could be sold separately. That is correct. In fact, lot two is um, slated to be sold. Sold. Okay. So, having said that, um, Mr. Cita Verney, is the CCNR kind of um, airtight with regards to maintenance of the common area? Because I want to make sure that if these are subdivided and sold individually, that the maintenance uh, is, is, is dissimilar for the, whole, for the whole development, not just so you're going to differentiate pod one and pod two in terms of maintenance. And Mr. Mayor Pro Tem and members of the council, those documents are separate documents. We've not received them yet for review, but certainly that is always part of our, our review to make sure that it is uniform. We've so made it very clear to the developer that we expect that sort of condition in the final approved documents that will require the maintenance of the property and money set aside for the maintenance in case we have to come in and do it. The conditions of approval b require both the CCNRs and a separate maintenance agreement, which will be reviewed by my office. Do we know if they're setting up like a uh, kind of a homeowners association, so to speak? That also is, is I believe, the commercial, commercial owners association is part of the conditions of approval. Okay, okay, so that's the question. All right, very good. All right, that's all I have for now. Um, Council Member Hamada, any questions? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, Again, first off, thank you for the tree question on the west side there. Uh, that, that was one of mine, definitely. Um, uh, look at Rowena, could you go back to the vicinity map, again, showing that parcel uh, that uh, is in the back there, or that, that commercial parcel? I think it was that one. And maybe just, uh, I think it's one more. Yeah, yeah there, there, perfect, perfect. That's the one. Um, so again, uh, just maybe uh, for the benefit of everybody, the, uh, the history uh, of the site and and the reason why that could not have been uh, part of it. <laughs> not to put you on the spot, <laughs> but it basically it's just like uh, yes, it 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 is a separate site. Of course, we know that, and and yeah, it would have been acquired, and and maybe I'm again answering it myself. But uh, again, it, it would have been a great opportunity, of course, and and maybe uh, maybe maybe it's just the uh, maybe a comment that at least we tried. I think maybe there was some effort to maybe get it, but and maybe get it into the project. But hey, it, it's 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 a private parcel. It was very likely expensive and. Uh, be it the city or the or the applicant ch chose not to uh, pursue it and and that's it and this is what we have yeah okay thank you i, I just uh, uh but um and again um yeah the question of the landscaping definitely want to soften this uh boundary line there um let's uh let's you can go back to the uh, uh site plan things like that or no uh well uh yeah um, and again, thank you for bringing up uh, the water quality issues and, uh, and also some of the other environmental uh, requirements and, um, uh, you know, within the conditions, there's some, uh, uh, you know, specific language that, that you know, again, outlines uh, certain requirements. And, and of course, that's going to come down the road when it's, you know, plan checked and, you know, there'll be a, maybe some, um, you know, again, water collection facilities. Uh, you know some of the other things that that hopefully will be incorporated and and uh, uh, more than just trying to get the uh, the landscape planners to you know retain the water that might again uh, and also uh, you know not uh, not to uh, you know contaminate the 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 sewer system those be separate and so on so um, again that's all part of the plan check process. 
correct. As part of the project, also the um, applicant did submit their um, low impact development, which is a water quality document also, which was uh, reviewed by our stormwater consultant. So it it will be more refined when we go through the plan, uh, plan check process, but they did go through that process already. Yes, all right, good. Um, Art, um, I know there'll be a fee, but up front, do you know of any art that's gonna be incorporated uh, for this project? Um, the applicant was informed of that requirement. Um, however, we have not received any information whether they ch they're choosing right. to install one on the property or to just pay the in lieu fee. Okay, so uh, again, something to be worked on. Worked on. All right. Um, oh, the last one. The wall. Uh, are the wall requirements? Again, uh, the condition says no less than six, no more than eight. So will it be all eight Stay in the back there? Or will it be some six? Because this is residential here. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe the eight will be here along uh, the commercial. Um, we did require for them to install uh, block walls because they are, they are proposing to maintain portions of it. Oh, um, right. We did require that the block walls match. So okay. um, uh, yeah. we did address it as to the specific height. Um, I believe it's just called out to be six feet. Six next to the commercial? The, the residential, residential and the commercial. And the commercial? All right. Not eight? All right. All right. Maybe something to discuss. All right. Um, I think I'll leave it at that. I, I think uh, I'll have some questions for the architect and, and uh, when it comes to uh, uh, the public hearing. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. For All right. Time. Thank you, Councilmember Hamada. J just additional information that um, uh, Councilmember Hamada and I serve as oh. the in the subcommittee. So I want to thank Mr. Hamada for that service. Uh, it was a pleasure working with the architect on this project. Uh, Councilmember Sanchez. You've been very quiet. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. <laughs> <laughs> a lot to a lot to take in. Um, first off, just uh, want to thank staff and and uh, the applicant for bringing this forward. And I know you guys have all been working uh, countless hours to get this to us. Um, first off, for staff, a couple questions, uh, just to kind of follow up off um, from Mayor Pro Tem's comments. My initial concerns regarding the overall long-term maintenance and sustainability of that. Um, would be very important to me in the C, uh, C and R's. I always want to say C R and R, but you know C C N R's. Um, th that would be very important to me to m ensure that we don't ever run into another issue like we have on you know Downey and Artesia. Uh, and so I look forward to making sure that I know Carl will do his due diligence on that, um, making sure there's no expiration date and all that good stuff. Um, so that 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 addresses my concern. I feel comfortable knowing that. That'll be handled, but definitely want to vocalize that. Um, the other thing I have for staff um, regarding the division of the pads is, is that a common is that common practice um, in other commercial developments of this magnitude? Because obviously this is this is a, a very good sized um, project. Is that a common practice in general for there to be for them to be subdivided? Um, not quite normally it's actually to consolidate them um, however from and that was also discussed with the applicant early on in the project and um, I believe the reason why they went this route is because one of the or not tenants but one of the the operators is actually wanting to own their own piece of land so got it okay and okay Perfect. Also, um, if I could just clarify, I just wanted to make sure um, the applicant did submit the CCNR, but it's towards the end of the preparation of the staff report already, so um, staff didn't have enough time to review it to make sure that it addresses everything um, for the project. So right. I just want to make sure that that's out there, that, that the applicant has actually started or mm -hmm. have drafted it already. Right, I, I saw it in the BMPs in the in the low impact report. I did see mention of it, and obviously it doesn't go into great detail. But I can see that there is um, 
uh, an understanding that it's important to to not only the council but you know to staff as well that we're you know um, what's it called Pre ensuring that we're you know going to maintain it properly and so forth so I, I okay that, that works with me um the other question for staff i have on the uh what is the exact amount that par i think parking they've done a phenomenal job 132 but required was only 72 correct okay that's good um th i think the rest of my questions really are going to be to to the applicant uh, so, so I'll return my time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for time. All right, thank you, Council Member Sanchez. Um, all right, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Hamada. In pro tem, uh, just one more question, as it, as I was thinking, uh, staff. Um, again, for the record, by code, this project will need EV stations. Currently, I believe the requirement per the um, Calgary Code would be to provide spaces that would allow for future EV charging stations. Okay. okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor Pro Temp, actually I have one more for staff, maybe two. Oh, hold on. Okay. Are you done? I'm sorry. Okay, done. Thank I you. want to make sure that Council Member is done. No, of course, of course. I'm just saying before we turn it over. Um, my question is maybe for for Carl or our city attorney, um, regarding the, the alcohol cell and the use of that and the transfer of it, we recently have worked with a, f a few other um, stores within the city to encourage them to not do single cell items of certain, um, you know, specific items like alcohol and cigarettes and things of that nature to uh, kind of discourage a certain level of unwanted activity. And it seems to have been working. Is that something that we, at this point in time, could have be part of this as a requirement that 7-Eleven um, doesn't do single cell items or would that have to be a voluntary thing my recollection is we've already imposed a requirement with regard to alcohol sales uh, that all employees have to go through a training course um, there have to be specific signage and I forget about the single sale thing but that's certainly something that we could look at uh, you could, should ask the applicant if they're okay with an amendment to that condition and we can certainly add it in uh, as part of the draft resolution and the conditions of approval, if that's something that you would like. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. City Attorney. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the last question is regarding the queuing area. Um, on page six, we talked about uh, the proposed uh, alleviation. When we're saying proposed alleviation, we're saying that within the own, within the own dev uh, pad, there's sufficient um, you know, road to queuing to allow for any over after six? Correct, so that would only be applicable for pad three because pads one and two have sufficient uh, queuing. Um, so pad three, which is right mm -hmm. here, only has a queuing for six. The way um, the site was designed, so if there could be overflow. Okay. That could accommodate that overflow somewhat similar to the operation, yeah, on site without affecting, um, you know, or spilling over to the street. Into the street, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then lastly, the mention about the boulevard dividers, is that, I know that's not obviously up for discussion today, but I'm assuming the, the goal will be to cover the entire, uh, <coughs> from Artesia all the way to the end, right? End of, to Rose, or to the end of the city boundaries? Is there Greggy? <coughs> the, uh, the median portion that's being built on Bellflower Boulevard as part of the uh, HSIP project is just covering from uh, Ramona uh, down to Cedar. That's gonna be where the majority of the median is there. Okay, okay, yep. for now, okay, thank you. <coughs> All right, Mr. Mayor for example, that, that's it for now. Thank All you. right, thank you so much. Mr. Amara, any more questions? I'm good, thank okay. you. Uh, is there a motion to open the public hearing? Uh, so moved. Second. Motion by Council Member Hamara, seconded by Council Member Sanchez uh, to close the public hearing, I mean, to open the public <laughs> hearing without objection, that will be the order. Okay, who's gonna start from the applicant? Good evening, I'm Jeff Gold, I'm the applicant, my family owns the property. 
We've been working with uh, city staff and city management for a um, couple years now, several years now, and although the team has been very detail-oriented and very focused on the you know, on what's in the best interest of the residents of Bellflower. It's been a good relationship and we appreciate all the <coughs> cooperation. And here to answer any questions, I think staff put together a good complete presentation, happy to you know, address any issues about the CCNRs or things like uh, any other questions you have. And uh, Mr. Other... Gold, I have a question for you. Sure. What would your dad say about this project? Because you know that um, your dad came to City Hall about this property. Mm -hmm. He fell in love with the property, and he just went from there. So I will. So what would you uh, say? I will be. I'll, I'll be. I'll be honest. As a as a as a retailer and a business person, his attitude is always do everything to maximize visibility and business. So his comments would be: he wants bigger signs and smaller trees. <laughs> those, <laughs> you asked. That's the, those would those would be his two those would be his two comments. There's plenty. Yeah, there's yeah. plenty. Yeah. You know, there's there's plenty. There's plenty of there's plenty of parking. There's plenty of parking, which is another one that's important uh, that was important to him. I think that it would be important that you know we, we put a project together that serves the that serves the local community, and for is convenient and. Um, Really is a nice project for the for the city that it that it make mm -hmm. you know improve uh, improves the city and the lives of the residents not in some grandiose way but in you know day to day mm -hmm. practical things of having a good place to you know get some chicken or a burger or right. a cup mm -hmm. of coffee or um, something from the convenience store to fill in your day to day. And, and considering the paths that they've been proposed so far, I mean, I'm very excited about it. For your comparo. Uh, Sonic and the 7-Eleven, those are very, very impressive, and those are things that we need in the particular area. Um, so uh, the other question I have for you is, um, oh, well, it's a comment about the parking. Uh, we may think that 132 is, is a lot compared to what's required, but keep in mind there's drive-through, mm -hmm. so the queuing is going to be affected. So we, we may need those 11, 11 vehicles for pads one, to, one and two. And I think we, be, we may come short on pad three eventually. So I, I think the city will be well served with those um, you know, parking spaces. All right, um, I, I think the, the hottest question here is the CCNR. If you can address that. Sure, or? so we've been uh, working with the tenants and the, and the one owner who's gonna be another co-owner of the center and um, we finally got comments from everybody once we, it was getting to a close enough version to what we thought was final and what we're comfortable with. We forwarded that to staff, it was a week or two ago. And basically it provides that all, you know, all of the owners of the property sign an agreement that goes in perpetuity that say the five parcels will be operated together as a, as a single shopping center. And one of the one of the owners will be designated at all times as the maintenance director uh, for the shopping center, mm -hmm. okay. and they will be responsible for the for the maintenance of all the la uh, landscaping in the co um, in the common areas. Oh. And then it governs how much each of the you know what percentage of the total cost each of the owners is responsible for, and deals with things like if an owner doesn't pay, then what's the potential recourse, and making sure that the the party who's responsible the um, so what's the, the what's the recourse if they don't pay up you can sue and there's there's penalties and le uh, penalties and legal fees and ultimately it can be a lien on the ultimately it can be a lien on the property and it could be uh, my understanding is ultimately that could be mm -hmm. foreclosed or create a create a violation of a loan by the way so you know we plan to continue to own four of the five parcels indefinitely we have no plans to we have no plans to sell. The fifth parcel will be owned by um, will be owned by the the Sonic, Sonic operator. Mm -hmm. So we have no plans to sell the other the other four parcels. Um, it had to be at least three parcels because there um, the way that it's set up, parcel one is on the is on the corner. Then there's this uh, then there's the Sonic mm -hmm. parcel. So you mm -hmm. they have to touch each other. So it would have had to been at least three, and the pad five that's in the back. That was um, still we're in the process uh, uh, process of leasing that, and we don't um, 
um, we're hoping to develop it as one phase, but we may do it as a second phase if we don't have enough, um, you know, sort of the economic uncertainty that we have right now. Um, it's a little, uh, you know, it's a big investment to make if we don't have enough tenants lined up. But we think it'll happen fairly soon once, uh, once, we, uh, once we have the approval of the project and we go to the, um, we go to, to the retail community showing the quality of the project and the quality of the other tenants, as well as the improvements that the city's doing to the median, we think we'll be able to um, lease it out um, with um, several good tenants in the Pad 5 as well. Yeah, I, I think you're off to a good start because you already have three, yeah. three of the Pad, three, mm -hmm. of the, three of the five, so you have 60% yeah. already in place, so that's a good start. All right, and the other burning question to you is, I know that this, the name is a placeholder, uh, Bellflower Convenience <laughs> Center. <laughs> so if I can make a suggestion to you, sure. if you can come up with something that is catchy, that can be identified as Bellflower, something that is become that will become a destination. So let me give an example. Uh, when you hear the word the Grove, mm -hmm. you know exactly where it is, yeah. right? So I'm looking for something, something like that because this is a massive development, almost four acres yeah. in the city of Bellflower. So it's huge. So I, I'm I'm tr I'm I'm trying to convince you to come up with a a name that is catchy, that is identifiable, and something that makes this place a destination. Okay. We'll 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 work with staff. We'll come up with something, and if we don't, we'll find somebody with better ideas than we. Okay. Have. <laughs> Very good. And then um, and then let me just confirm about Sonic because when I talk to someone about this, um, can can you show the the, the Sonic portion? I just want to confirm um, what was described to us. Not the other one where the parking lot, which is Sonic. No, the other one. Uh, there's the, uh, I think it's before this. Did you want the fly through? Maybe you're referring to the fly oh, through? It could be. Well, let, me, let me just kind of go, go direct to the question. Will they be in roller skates? <laughs> <laughs> because that's, that's the uh, typical Sonic. So, honestly, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> we, they, I, I guess they weren't able to come to the uh, come tonight, but we, uh, we asked we asked them to come if they could. But um, I really don't know. <laughs> they, I believe they they actually are will be on roller skates. Uh, I'm the civil engineer. My name is Steve. Oh, there Paul, you go. Kimley That's Horn. the one. Okay. Um, we have been asked to make sure that the um, the slopes specifically towards the outside of the building. I don't know if you can keep going. Um, there is a. Um, there will be a Sonic employee-only ramp towards that southern side there oh, okay. um, that will be designated employee-only and will uh, not have truncated domes. It's not an ADA access. Um, uh -huh. Those truncated domes tend to uh, trip up those skaters. Okay, I see. Yes. So they will be on the skates. That is correct. Okay, that's going to be a winner. I'm well, telling you that. Yeah, I, mean, we're, we're not, I, I don't think we're going to be comfortable with the condition that oh, they're right. always exactly <laughs> on skates, but it sounds like they're designing it so that they can support the, the, the roller skates. Yeah, okay, good, yes. good. And I'm very excited about this project. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Councilor Hamada and I were part of the subcommittee. So my, uh, my other question to you is, uh, what is your timeline for this development? If it's approved today. Yes. When do you open? When do we open? Um, so the whole opening process is probably still a year and a couple months out. The longest time frame will be SoCal Edison undergrounding those above ground power lines. So mm -hmm. we're currently in process right now. Um, I believe it's called the Rule 20 undergrounding. It does take some time and they are backed up. Um, right now we are confirming all of the tenants' power loads as well as their one line di diagrams, which is an electrical engineering um, mm -hmm. plan that we have to put together. Uh, once that happens, um, it's still right now about eight months for them to mobilize and underground. Okay. But I think staff can help you on that with Edison, right, Mr. Stewart? We'll try. Okay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Their experience has been our experience, too. So. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. Any question of the applicant? Uh, Mr. Oh. Councilmember Hamada. Mm, yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, first off, Mr. Gold, again, thank you for getting it here to us. So that's, uh, again, to be commended. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I remember on, I think I was on one or two calls and talked about some of the old project, and I, I, I'm glad we came to this, uh, this uh, <laughs> again, this proposal. Um, to, the, uh, to the design staff, uh, 
well, first off, again, I, I, I do want to reiterate the word excitement. It, it definitely uh, it really is uh, uh, as, as the key word uh, we call attached to this project. Uh, I think this will be something that's going to be great for this community. Uh, again, more of the shopping, eating opportunities, and, and you know, and especially Sonic is going to be regional and it's going to draw. So, um, um, again, I think it uh, uh, looks like uh, you've done well with the materials and, and the colors. Uh, definitely want to, uh, again, praise the architect. Are you the architect? Oh, good. Thank you. Um, again, uh, again, well thought out uh, with the mixture and, and the colors. Um, uh, I had asked a question earlier to staff about, about art. Are you th any thoughts now or, or, or later? I mean, we're, we're open. All right. All right. Think about it. That's, yeah. that's what uh, we're, we're open. You to hear think again. We talked about, it, so, you know, we can, we can pay the fee. We can put something on site. I mean, I love art, but I'm not an artist. Mm. So uh -huh. that, well, that's, I, that's definitely, the guy. Not, <laughs> definitely not going to be me to, doing the, doing the uh -huh. artwork, but we can, you know, we, we're happy to work with, uh, uh -huh. happy to work with the staff and um, figure something yeah. out. Uh, so Rowena, could you go to the site plan? Just wanted to hear from the architect on, uh, again, why we've been told, and, and I just want to hear from the architect. Council member, could oh, you repeat that again, please? The, uh, the, the site plan. Site, the plan. site plan. Oh, the lot. Yeah, the lot. The, yeah, the, the, uh, the vacant uh, lot. No, no, not, not the vacant, vacant one. Lot. No, the one with uh, we had the uh, you know parcel divisions and so on. I think, yeah, the site plan. Did I say not say separate? <laughs> there you go. Oh, there. there yeah, there, there it, it is. is. Perfect, perfect. That's it. Uh, a pad two, which is sonic. So this area. So we were explained why that's not raised. and. Um, yeah, my I'm Greg James with McKinley yeah. Malik Architects. Um, that is actually a sonic request and a sonic prototype, and that's how they run their operations. Um, the reason being is they're, they're saying they typically don't have a line going all the way around the building of cars. So cars could technically come yeah, in this way, yeah. from the back yeah. and then and come, come right across in. that slip and right slip in. into that right. drive through lane. Yeah, okay. And that well, was the reason for the request. The, the, that's very logical. I can see that. So, all right, thanks for that. Um, uh, still a question for the architect, and, and I don't know if the civil is involved in this, but when it uh, when it comes to fire flow and and you know the fire department is going to require those the uh, somewhat sizable valves, uh, do, uh, do you have an idea of, w of placement or does each building going to have one? Basically, I think yes, yeah. each building will have its own fire yeah, detector right. tank. Yes, and so so we know those valves are going to be showing up somewhere on the site, and and uh, obviously they're going to need to be screened and and so on. Hope Hopefully, but typically, they sometimes they get to the towards the street. Any further well, thoughts on that? So, the because of the streetscape that it, that will be happening on Bellflower Boulevard, um, we have designed our utility connections to come off of both Ramona and Cedar, so the side streets, uh, to prevent any additional cuts into the new asphalt mm -hmm. on Bellflower. Um, so lot pad one and two will actually be serviced off of one fire connection where lots three and four will also be serviced from a separate fire connection. Mm -hmm. um, and pad five, lot five, will have its own fire connection as well. Mm -hmm. um, so each um, fronting landscape buffer will have a large, um, presumably eight inch uh, backflow. So mm -hmm. fire, uh, fire protection backflow device. Um, and there will also be approximately four hydrants on site as well. Um, there is in the uh, submittal, there is a fire access plan and, and fire hydrant plan. Uh, we have spaced those hydrants based off of uh, the Cal California Fire Code separation requirements as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, just make the effort to, uh, you know, conceal them as best as possible. I guess, uh, you know, I'm, of course, you know, fire needs to have access to it, of course. But Correct. It'll uh, it'll uh, hopefully be uh, you know fitted in uh, well. Uh, I think my last question, I, uh, as I talked earlier about the wall, 
uh, again, staff is going to acquire a, a six foot to make it consistent with the uh, rest of the walls that are, that are going to be kept. The way it's written in the recommended conditions of approval is that it's minimum six feet. Yeah, all right, minimum. And uh, I'm just, I was thinking about uh, Mr. Mr. Gold's comment about smaller trees. So with a six foot, bigger trees probably would help, especially in the back. <laughs> <laughs> So I do, we're we're keeping some of the walls. We're already at a certain height, and then yeah. there's areas where there's no walls, and we're adding new. So the intent was to go to the minimum. Of six uh, feet. If you can come closer oh, to yeah. the microphone, yeah. is that the curtain intent is to go to the minimum six feet um, of on the on the walls? All right. So. Okay. And with the proper landscaping. Right. Yeah. Are you? Objecting to the six feet one. No, 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 no. no. Just uh, again, I, I wanted to okay. also clarify again for Mr. Cole's comment about uh, uh, you know, bigger so size and smaller trees. And I said, the trees in the back he likes, trees in the front he doesn't. All like right, that. that's right. That's what I figured. <laughs> so we're talking about the trees in the back. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Definitely the trees in the, the back. The trees in the back. That's, that's, All right. That's where we both we both saw that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we and we, we and we were aware of the request for the additional trees. Along yeah, there, okay. and, and that's already been discussed yeah. with staff okay, and agreed good. Yeah. to. Yeah, they were, right. they, were, they, were, they, were, they were nice blowing in the wind in, mm -hmm. in the fly through. So. <laughs> yeah. It has, they have to keep moving, yeah. It has to be in unison. Yeah. Only in Santa Ana. <laughs> yeah. All right. Again, uh, uh, very excited for this. Uh, uh, and again, thank you for uh, getting it here, and uh, hopefully we're looking forward to a a a timely you know construction period and and uh, yeah people can start eating and shopping. So so you want you have. I was you have say additional we, information. We have we have one request oh. and the conditions okay. of approval. Okay. Um, condition number twenty uh, twenty four is that it says the applicant must install trash compactors for each of the proposed trash enclosures. And there's some pushback from the from the tenants that um, from Sonic and from Pollo Comparo, 7-Eleven, um, that have all told us that they're lower volume stores than like say an In-N-Out or a Raising Canes, and that's where you a lot of times will see those tr compactors used is whenever they have a more, you know, they have a higher volume and that they don't typically use them in their operations. And so they're asking if we could get that condition removed and then we can add more information to that. Yeah, and uh, as far as the size of the enclosures as well, um, they are sized to include three double size six cubic yard bins, which are already on the larger side, not typical. Typically we see uh, waste management give three yard bins. And so we technically would have double the size allocated inside our trash enclosures than what operations would normally have. Um, and the th reason for the three existing yeah. spacing right now is for trash, recycle, and the compost. And so in the event that a tenant representation of 7-Eleven would fill up their bin quicker, we could ask for an additional three cubic yard bin instead mm -hmm. of the trash compactor. Okay, I'd like to invite our public works director, assistant city manager, Len Gorecki, to kind of respond to the question because he's our resident expert. Yes, of course. <laughs> <I'm> okay. <laughs> far from it <laughs> with, with the way the state operates. Well, you are the resident expert. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, I, Bernie and I would be happy to go back and talk with Beth regarding this condition. I, I think what you, what's important to understand here is um, the amount of space that will be taken up by bins, the fact that each Business will have to have its own account, mm -hmm. therefore its own bins, its own enclosures, uh, and working along that, um, you know, probably is what led us to um, conditioning the the compactor, uh, just simply from a, a space, a, a decrease in frequency, and its ability to handle everything from normal trash to the organics to the to the uh, recycling in those bins. So. Um, the city attorney had a suggestion on this. We could resolve this by amending the condition to state that it would be approved by the director of public works as reasonably necessary as he works with them on the needs there. We have a pretty good history of the way things go in this town with the recent developments that we've had. 
and we are having to plan for the digesters and the compactors in different places where in the past we haven't. So we're happy to review it with you, but I think the best you do now, if the council concurs, is to let Len be the final say. He certainly knows the standards on that. So. Because if, if I recall, when we had the subcommittee meeting, um, Mr. Hamada, uh, Mr. Gorecki brought up this issue, so we kind of deferred that question right. to Mr. Gorecki. Yeah, we're so. not, quite honestly, on the surface, we're not really willing to, to relinquish that requirement on this property because we think it's necessary, but we're willing to work with you. And as long as Len understands, he understands the standards that we're trying to apply and that, uh, you know, if we reasonably can require it, and in some cases we can, maybe not in some others, but at least from that point, you can have a discussion with the public works director on how to best do that. So are you okay with that? Yeah, okay. perhaps we can... Um, um, can you come closer to the... Yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah, we're fine. We're fine with that. I mean, perhaps it's running the electrical and whatever drainage lines we need to run in case we're going to do the compactors in yeah. the future. And then, if it's needed, we'll uh, we'll add them. But um, and but that's the standard we take pretty seriously, quite frankly. But it's we're worth ha it's worth having a discussion with you about. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I think that's fair. Okay. okay. Um, staff, Mr. Mr. Uh, I, uh, yes, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, uh, uh, Beth. Is it required by code or not? Not in the zoning code. Okay, all right, that, that's all I want. Um, and, uh, and you wouldn't object to more frequent pickups if, if, if it starts overflowing, of course. I would require it. Yeah, okay, uh, there it goes. Uh, all right. No, I, I, I think uh, we, uh, we had a kind of a, a discussion about this mm -hmm. at, at the subcommittee and, and uh, definitely a, our resident expert uh, replied and and, <laughs> yeah, and and I think yeah no I, I think it's reasonable to, to work with you all right thank you if we're finished with that I think there was also a question about the ABC license for the single use and we do um, we do have a representative of 7-eleven here who can perfect want to try to discuss thank that. you sure. yes actually thank you all right thank you Darlene Reeves 7-eleven real estate nice to meet you and glad to be here hi Darlene how you doing um, well, actually, so the the question really was, and you know, we've had some, we've been being proactive on handling some unwanted activities in certain areas, and and the way we've been doing that is by kind of working with the local store owners to minimize the sale of or eliminate the sale of single item um, beers, uh, liquor, and, uh, and alcohol and stuff like that, and cigarettes and things of that nature, and it seems to have been working over the last few months. It was. Uh, you know, our attorney's idea and so forth, and we moved with it. Is that, do you think, something that 7-Eleven would be willing to co cooperate with, with us on that end? Um, I think that it's, um, if, if the concern is safety, um, and I think that's probably what the concern is, um, transferring it from where it is now, kind of far back in the center, to a place that's well lit, and um, uh, kind of providing a safer environment, um, I think it's an opportunity to still serve the um, budget beer buyer, you know. Um, it's not about safety. It's about a congregation of people who sit and drink singles in front of those locations. We have a history of that at the current 7-Eleven. That's why he's bringing it up. Okay. So, yeah, yeah I understand that, too. Yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're willing to work with you guys 100%. Uh, we'd love to keep the opportunity there, but uh, we understand that the compromise we might have to make as far as safety or staff or training or whatever it may be to accommodate that as well. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. I like it. Thank you very much. Uh, and if I may, Mr. Mayor, sure, pretend, absolutely. I'd like to Go ahead. ask a few other questions. Uh, Mr. Gold, first off, pleasure to have you here. Um, as you know, I'm not part of the subcommittee, so it's my first time seeing everything. Um, uh, so excited to see it here, everyone. Thank you for your information and for everything. A um, couple of things on the note about your about signage and bigger signage and more visibility. Mm -hmm. um, is there a plans in the future to find some way, you know, to acquire some land near the 91 and put up a nice big Sonic, you know, um, the, the standard Sonic sign that you normally see like in Fullerton or, or when I'm going down the five to, you know, to uh, north, uh, five north? I, you know, we don't have any specific plans. I think in terms of the, if it was just to serve the Sonic, it would be you know, it would be really up to uh, really be up to them mm -hmm. to to do that. If it was something that could you know advertise the advertise the whole center, 
then we'd certainly be op uh, op uh, open to it. That would be great for the you know, great for the property. I would encourage it. You know, it's something unique, it's something great. Kind of talking about Mr. Uh, Mayor Pro Temp's comments about you know being something that that uh, that'll be a drive and bring people to the city. Uh, it'd be neat to see something like that. Uh, kind of like the in and out sign. You know, just visibility wise, it'd be nice to have. In my opinion, no requirement, just food for thought. Wanted to throw it out there. Um, the the other item that I wanted to talk to you about um, on the plan A, uh, the sheet number A010, uh, item 15 and 16, there's mention about a future electrical vehicle stall. You have uh, seven stalls there mm -hmm. and then a future clean air and van pool EV stall, four stalls. Mm -hmm. um, my question there is when, when it says future electric vehicle stalls, are they simply stalls or are they actual electric charging stations? Yeah, um, as has been stated before, so the California Green Building Code only requires those stalls to be future. And so um, what that means right now in the code is that we would install uh, direct conduits from the back room, uh, so the electrical room and each tenant into that space, uh, two empty conduits with pull string, um, for, and that load would actually have to be available inside those panels as well. Um, if those stalls were to actually have EV stalls in the future, all that would need to be done is that stall would have to be the the charger would be placed there and hooked up into the into the electrical room. So you'll leave it prepped and ready for the future. That's correct. When it's required. Okay. Okay. Very good. Um, and you would know this better than I would. Obviously, I'm not you know an engineer. The is the is there a requirement for the number of stalls? Is that the seven and four? That's correct. So the number of stalls uh, for EV actually mimics the ADA code as well. Um, so I'm not off the top of my head, but if you had 10 stalls on your on your site, you'd require one future EV stall. If you had up to 25, then it's two and it, it grows. Um, and then it's a, a percentage base once it gets over 100 stalls. Okay, very good. Thank you for sharing that. Appreciate yep. it. Awesome. Thank you for that clarification. Um, okay, let's see. And then the other one I had for you, um, on the pad number five, the additional tenants do you, Mr. Gold, do you believe that there would be flexibility if if you were to get a, um, I know you have right now, you're scheduling five tenants there. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I hear a lot from residents is the need or the desire for a grocery store. Doesn't, not, you know, not necessarily one of those large, large grocery stores, but a more um, convenient store style, similar to 7-Eleven, which I like about that, by the way. Do you believe you would have is that something that would be of interest of maybe having a, a um, grocery store in that back pad five? I mean, like a fresh and easy or uh, what are those new ones? The Amazon fresh. Is that the, the I mean, I think we'd certainly be open to any, mm -hmm. you know, any good users that serve the community and that's harmonious with the rest of the center. Um, I, in terms of that specific user, I think their square footage requirements a lot, uh, a lot greater. So they would not, um, but there may be, there are some specialty stores who may, um, may, be uh, may be interested in a smaller format and we'd certainly be open to that. Yeah, I think there's a neighborhood Walmart or something like that. They usually run on a smaller, I'm just throwing food for, you know, mm -hmm. just uh, information yeah, they're out still there. Not, right they're, they're still not quite that small. Okay. They're, even the neighborhoods are, you know, 20, 30,000 square feet. Oh, okay. so. oh, thank you. Sure. Appreciate that. And then uh, lastly for... Thank you for clarifying the C, uh, CC and our comments. Uh, the idea that you're keeping four of them, it, you know, it's reassuring as well. So I just want to share that. And then lastly, um, let me see here. That's it, actually. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem, that, that concludes my question. All right. Thank you. Any more final questions? Yeah, as I... Think here, um, uh, Mr. Gold Pad One. Um, right now, it's uh, you know looking like a split uh, building. Um, you're still out there talking, maybe for a, a single user. We we have one uh, we have one tenant who we're negotiating a lease for the front, approximately 1,800 square feet. 
and it's not signed yet. They've asked us to keep it confidential, but it's a chain. Uh, it's a chain. Uh, it's a chain. Very high quality. Mm. Um, very high quality business. I think everybody would be very, uh, very pleased with it. They have drive-through and sit-down and uh, the patio use. And then we think once that lease is signed, we'll have um, a num uh, it'll be v relatively easy to lease the back portion, mm -hmm. seeing the, the strong yeah. co-tenancy there. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, you know, pa uh, with a pad to the uh, Sonic. I, you know, to me, you know, Sonic is is uh, definitely one of the uh, you know gems of this project, and I think it's one of those build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, definitely, that's that's been the big plus of this project, I think. Um, uh, 7-Eleven, the uh, single item uh, matter. Um, staff, uh, a, a while back, um, our last uh, convenience store, gas station, um, that's a competitor. Um, was that requirement imposed on, on that one? If you if do you recall which one if if I didn't want to I don't believe it was no. I don't think it was yeah. right. all right okay next uh, are you referring to the Lakewood and Gardendale no no that's that's even older Clark uh, Clark and Clark and Artesia. Artesia. no uh, Clark and Somerset at least the one I remember so oh, you, yeah. you you don't recall any any anything about no all right I don't recall that. And maybe it was related to the um, uh, the access points. The, the issue here, though, is the local history. Yeah, that we have. yeah that's yeah. what's oh, driving yeah, this. Oh yes, definitely yeah. across street. Yeah. I, I, uh, May I address um, something that Mr. Sure. Sanchez brought forward, though? Sure, go ahead. Um, so this um, convenience store is about double the size is of the one that we have currently. So we have a lot more to offer. So um, as far as the community and um, fresh food and a bacon store and things mm -hmm. like that that we're going to be offering at this location. Um, there'll be a lot more of um, retailer initiative. So whatever the community asks for, we'll be able to bring into the store. But I, I think you heard the, you heard the concern here is um, people congregating, buying single oh, yes. single yes. I single cans yes. and drinking. And it would be great if you ban the sales of single forties. That would make us very happy. Okay. So. <laughs> well, if I understand, Darlie, your your point about having the larger offerings is that your business has a very big vested interest in attracting the entire community. Yes, exactly. So that the alcohol will be a much smaller portion of the total yes, sales. Exactly. Therefore, right. you don't want, you know, you, it's in your own selfish vested interest to make sure that the whole community feels comfortable to come exactly. and do their grocery and other shopping. Well, well. especially because you're going to have a gas station. So you don't want a lot of people circling around, even panhandling. Oh, of course, yes. So, yeah, that'll deter people to come in and get gas. And okay, so uh, because I think it's also to your, to well, your we're interest need, to we're, do that. We're going to need to have a discussion about that. Yeah, Definitely. because I think that there's uh, several issues there. I think there's a couple workarounds, but we're going okay. to find one. Yeah. Yes, so. absolutely. And Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, since the applicants are here being so agreeable to everything, let me propose some language to the two conditions that we've been talking about. One is condition number 24. Okay, I was about to ask you that. Which okay. has to do with the trash compactors. I would be rewritten to read as follows. If reasonably required by the public works director, the permittee must install trash compactors for each of the proposed trash enclosures. And we would have condition number 33, and it would read as follows. Signs must be posted at all entrances and exits of the convenience store premises stating that the sale of alcoholic beverages for on-site consumption is prohibited. Permittee, permittee understands and agrees that single-serving alcoholic beverage sales are prohibited. Did you hear uh, condition 33? The, the can, can you repeat, Mr. Yes. City Attorney? Permittee understands and agrees that single serving alcoholic beverage sales are prohibited. So it'll be a condition for not having the trash compactors? Or? No, no, no. no, 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 no the sing, single, the single, single, single serving. Single serving. Yeah, single like one can. He's saying. On the sales of single cans of alcohol or bottles of alcohol, they don't. We want to stop the sales of singles. Okay. If if, if you're good with that, we're going to write it in the conditions. 
So, I, I mean, is it something that you, you said you could work on still? Or? Well, look, no. there's, I, I'm saying it's, it's our preferred mode of operation. Okay. We've had nothing but problems with it in other locations. And we're going to dig in pretty hard. You would have to, quite frankly, you'd have to come up with a, a very, very detailed security plan to stop that if you didn't have that condition in there. And I don't think any of those solutions are going to make you particularly happy. But it is a history we have. I'm almost 100% certain it'd be duplicated here if you didn't have the, either the security to stop it or you prohib prohibited the sales of it. And if I can just tag team with that yeah. thought, it's going to be easier to write it here than it is for a settlement agreement between the city and your premises somewhere down the road. Yeah. Okay. Because there'd be a, look, we, like I said, we have a history of that. And just right across the street. And we're, it'll be a zero tolerance situation where I'm going to put up with it, in a new location especially. So that's just simple as that. And I just soon not fight, <laughs> truthfully. I will not yeah, fight. I, yeah. I, I, I feel that we can serve a community with that offering, but I want to make you guys happy, and I would um, be remiss if I didn't say yes. <laughs> well, well keep in mind also that you have um, higher quality neighbors in your yeah. business. So, Sonic. Sonic and Pollo oh, compare. Yeah. So, so you're okay with that? Yes. Okay. All right. So if we All can right. just have so agreement on both condition number 24 and 33. With 20, 24 is fine. Okay. And may I make a suggestion on behalf of 7-Eleven, I'm also a representative of them, um, that we do include single sales less, or prohibit the sales less than 375 milliliters. Um, that would also, if you were to write it the way that you, you did present, it would prohibit the sale of bottles of wine as well, so which we. That's clear. So it's like a. Um, so, that's the standard condition I always see. I'm pretty sure that bottles of wine are greater than 375 milliliters, and the 375 would exclude a 40 ounce. 750. Is it 750? I think it's 750. Yeah. yeah. Standard bottle of wine is 750. 750. So this. This would prohibit prohibit the 40. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Forty would be bigger than the than the three. It's 40. It's 40. But I think, we need, I think they, need, they need to be able to sell bottles of wine. So we need to word it in a way they could sell, a, uh, they could sell bottles of wine. What's, it, what's the bottle of wine? 750. So a bottle of wine is smaller than a 40. Oh, That's a, so how many ounces is it? 24, about. That I know. <laughs> Uh -huh. What perhaps was that beer, malt liquor beer in forty yeah. ounces or less? Okay. Single serving. I. Okay. You tell me. Yeah, it's your direction, guys. <laughs> okay. I'm what's the, what's the largest single bottle? Because I'm, I'm, 40, not, 40 I'm, not ounce. Be, I'm not a beer drinker. 40 right? ounce. They're big bottles, right? 40 ounce. 40 ounce. So we're trying to that's prohibit that. That's what we see our residents So we're trying to prohibit thing. that. I'm just kidding. We're trying to prohibit that, correct. Okay. Up to 40. Right. So in excess of 40 can be sold mm -hmm. individually? So a bottle of wine can be sold? Can we, I, I think what they're asking is to exempt a bottle of wine. Right. So I think we could write it with the ex exempt of wine that wouldn't fall in that category, right? Can we just be that direct, or do we need to? Well, there are single servings of yeah, wine. To oh, I see what you're saying. Of wine to the small one. So. Oh, I see. The single shot. Well, there is shots. Right. Well, I think we need to go to the, con to the size of the container. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so you're talking about a bottle of wine. What's appropriate for 40 and you can't yeah. So the 750 milliliters would be okay, Mr. Mayor I mean, Pro Temp. If I, yes. I'm I'm comfortable suggesting that just so that we can move forward, that staff figure it out, or or do we need to have? Oh, never we mind. We need to have it. I see your yeah, yeah, condition. condition. <laughs> so will will um, 750 milliliters be okay? Yes. Okay. 
Are you okay with that, 750? Yeah. It can I mean, be sold individually. That's a bottle of wine. Right, right but that doesn't cover that doesn't 40 count. ounces. No. We still, the bigger yeah. problem is the sale of the 40 ounce right. so cans put, of beer, which is greater than 750 milliliters. Oh, I see. That's the problem. So, well, we can do it we, this way. Single serve beer and write it exactly as that. Single serve malt liquor beer and ale? Yes. We can prohibit the sales of single serve beer, malt liquor, and ale. FYI, a 40 ounce is 1,182 milliliters. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, a um, <laughs> that's a lot of wine. That's a lot of wine. That's a lot of wine. <laughs> All right, let's try this. Okay. Permittee understands and agrees that sales of single serving malt liquor and Beer is prohibited. And ale. Malt liquor, ale, and beer. Oh, I don't know who's going to do the field test on this. but Regardless of the size of the container. Yeah, I'm just putting it there regard okay. without mentioning the size. All right. Uh, Ma'am, are you okay with that? I am. Thank you so much. There you go. All right. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Again, we said single. 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 Victor, uh, you, wait, well, yes, thank you. I was getting clarification real quick. So I think that sounds great. The only thing is it does not include har hard liquor. We don't have that type of license. Okay, here. great. Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate that clarification. And, and, and in anticipation of your next question about single cigarette sales, that's already prohibited. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I wasn't going to ask that. I already knew that was. <laughs> all right. I, I'm just trying. I know that 7-Eleven wouldn't right. do that. Just, I know it's happening, but I know that 7-Eleven wouldn't All right. Just for that. clarity, can you repeat <laughs> uh, the rewritten condition 33? Yes, sir. For the sake of the applicant. Uh, signs must be posted at all entrances and exits of the convenience store premises, stating that the sale of alcoholic beverages for on-site consumption is prohibited. Permittee understands and agrees that sales of single-serving malt liquor, ale, and beer is prohibited. I'm seeing nods all around all right. for the record. What, can you repeat the first part? The sale of alcohol is prohibited? No. Sign. No. Oh, on consumption. consumption. Okay. There'll be signage. That's the okay. existing I misheard it. Yeah. Except at the gas station. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can see her smiling, so you're okay with that, right? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. All right. Um, do you have any question of us? We've been asking you questions earlier. Any right. question? I want to be fair to you. <laughs> Okay, you're good. We're one good. more, uh, I'm sorry, one more question for 7-Eleven, just uh, because I think that would be the only one that had possibilities. Um, I look at outdoor displays and like certain equipment, such as propane uh, sales, uh, newspaper racks, water machines, that stuff you guys don't. We've eliminated that yeah, from very our good. That's right. Uh, Follow-up question, if I may, if you're if you concluded. That's, that's fine. All right, yes, Council Member Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, first of all, I, I heard groceries will be, okay, perfect. What 7-Eleven could I go to nearby to see what this one's going to model? You know, that's a great question. There's a lot of them being remodeled as we speak. Okay. Um, so I could find out and then follow up with you and, and let you know. Perfect. But a Thank lot you. of them have, will have like a nine foot grocery section for like ready to eat craft, um, um, noodle stuff like that. So. Thank you. Well, I thought you were going to say Belfast is going to be the first one. It's going to be the first one like this, with the exactly. on the outside. There you go. So, That's yeah. the answer I was looking for. Thank you so much. All right. Um, thank you. I'd like to hear from the public. If there's any comment from the public, any question, give you an opportunity to chime in. Yep. This is the old Platypo uh, parcel. Yeah. Glad to finally see something happening with that. Uh, my understanding is four out of the five buildings are have tenants for them. It's right now. They're all three, five. Three. Huh? Officially, they have three tenants already. Three. Out of five. Okay. Because <clears throat> uh, I, I would imagine it's they've had one, two, and three, which would leave 
Five in the back hasn't got a tenant yet. It's pad, pads two, two three, and four. Two, three, and four have the tenants, okay. Because <clears throat> I brought up an item a while back about possibly relocating a restaurant. <clears throat> which I would I would love to see happen because with these people here with three parcels already with tenants for it, there could be room for a restaurant in the back of if the city is willing to work with it money wise and the developer to help out a little bit to move relocate the sizzler. And at that point of relocating the sizzler would open up that whole big lot there where Northgate Market is interested. And I told you I know the people at Northgate. So that would be up to the owners here, or developers or whatever if they're interested in something of that nature, and if the city is too. Now, the other thing that kind of bothers me, a battling around about one container, alcohol. How do you sit there and try to put something on a business, and you don't even own a business or know nothing about a business? It's not up to you people to tell these people this poor lady here that she can't only sell she can't sell uh, one item she's got to sell one item only or whatever it is it's none of your darn business you're not running it you don't own the business they're trying to make make something of it and sell a sell a product so to even try to formulate something and tell a person how they're going to operate that business or you don't like it you all need to be replaced you're stepping out of your bounds, and personally, I think you've opened yourself up for one hell of a lawsuit, and you deserve it, too. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you, John. The, um, the applicant agreed to the conditions, so that's their story to say. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Do I have to put my name on here? Yeah, please sign in. Uh, just, just for information, your name's gonna be in the minutes of the meeting, so that's why we're asking for your names. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Uh, my name is Brian Espinosa, resident of Bellflower. I actually do live on Cedar Street, down the street from here, so I did wanna express my concerns about the project. Um, I do have three main concerns that I wanted to address, and right. uh, my first one being that you know, we're past COVID and this is more of an auto-centric project, more than a community-based project. You know, um, to me, having three drive-throughs in one lot just doesn't seem right when you wanna create a sense of community in your, in your city. Um, kind of like the council member Hamada pointed out, like if you wanna have art there, do you want people to just drive by it or do you want them to interact with it? Uh, I think that's very important to create a space where people wanna hang out such as the In-N-Out on Artesia, you can compare it to the drive-through one that's on South Street and Bellflower. More people are gonna go to the one, on, the one on Artesia because you can hang out there, you can eat inside and just hang around. So that's my um, problem with that. The second one was my problem with the 7-Eleven. Um, I personally think there was a lack of thorough site analysis, just knowing that there's a 7-Eleven across the street. I'm not sure what the plans are for that. It's gonna move. It's gonna move yeah. there. And I'm assuming what would place it, it's already built for a liquor store. I'm not sure if that would be the next tenant that would move in there. So I don't know if that same problem would stay. And then just um, the, the fact that there's a gas station being implemented when there's already four, less than, <clears throat> less than half a mile, within a half a mile radius, you have the two that are, I believe, on Beach Street, right over the 91, the one on Clark and Artesia. Uh, the one on Park. Park, I'm sorry, the 76 and the Chevron the one on Clark and Artesia, and then you have the one on Woodruff and Artesia as well. Those are all within less, about half a mile or less, which I think, I don't think it's essential to put that in there. I don't think it's what we're looking for in that neighborhood. And just the way that it's laid out as well, um, there's a lot of homeless issues on Cedar Street, and 
just be seeing how right behind the gas station, it might not happen when it's built, but give it a couple years and you're gonna see people camping behind it, as well as on the side closer to, I believe, Rose or Ramona. Um, I can already see that happening. Um, it's happened already in a couple of new places that are built. And my last one, it had to do with like a public health issue. I think that the city of Bellflower is pushing too many fast food chains in the city. As Council Member Sanchez pointed out, um, a grocery store is really needed. And I don't think anyone wants to buy their groceries at a 7-Eleven. You're not gonna get all your produce there. The only ones that I see in the city are gonna be the Smart and Final and the Aldi, that's just like a mile and a half away, which doesn't make sense that I can walk five minutes to 15 different fast food restaurants, but I can't even walk five minutes to a grocery store. I think, you know, there's so many families that live on these neighborhoods and it's important for us to be able to at least have access to a place where we can get all our groceries at once, um, not just a small little convenience store slash market. You can't get everything there. You can't get your meats there. You can't get your eggs and your, your vegetables there. But I just think that there could be better uses for this site and neglecting a grocery store component when it's really needed in the city, um, I think it's just irresponsible. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I, I just want to kind of make comments about your comments. Um, uh, yes, I hear you regarding lack of grocery stores in Bellflower since we lost State of Brothers on um, Artesia and Lakewood, but un unfortunately, unfortunately, we are operating on a free market economy, so it's really up to the business to come to Bellflower we cannot really force them to, let's say, build a grocery on that pad, so to speak. We can't. It's, it's up to the market. It's up to the developer to do it. If they can attract grocery stores, that's well and good. So, uh, no, that's, that you have your chance. Okay. All right. Anyone else? All right. Thank you so much. All right. Mr. Hamada, Mr. Sanchez, what's your pleasure? Uh, I'll... Uh, uh, move to close the public hearing, if that's what. All right. Second. Uh, motion by Council Member Hamada, seconded by Council Member Sanchez to close the public hearing. Without objection, that will be the order. All right. Um, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Any, any final comments before we move on? I, I think I have some final comments. Sure, to go ahead. First off, um, you know, there was conversation regarding you know, the oversight or stepping out of boundaries and trying to manage or mitigate concerns that are in our community. I think that we're doing the right thing this evening by taking those steps. I don't think that it's an over, I don't think that we're overextending our boundaries or what have you. I think that we're, the community and the residents want us to find ways and solutions to mi mitigate these uh, ongoing issues. Uh, and, I, and unfortunately, this is one of those um, solutions and it's working. And uh, so I'm just glad that we're, we're taking that step here this evening. So just want to mention that. All right. Thank you. Mr. Uh Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, again, uh, uh, I think all the parties have worked really hard on this project. It's taken longer than we thought. And uh, uh, again, uh, yeah, the projects of today are, are, are again, market driven. And uh, uh, again, all the cities are still competing for certain uses and uh, so um, based on our studies we have a great staff that has done a lot of research they go to uh, again ICSC and deal with uh, again all of the big boys <coughs> and and all the medium-sized ones and even the smaller ones that, that are there and and they're working to try to uh, you know create a project to, that's workable in town that has some opportunities yes I understand that uh, again, are we saturated with food? Are we uh, saturated with gas stations? Uh, again, I think it's uh, what's still factored in is, is uh, um, uh, yes, there's still separation. There's uh, uh, you know travel patterns. Again, when you think about a gas station south, yeah, there's one to the east and there's yeah to the west. But uh, as you go down towards Bellflower, this will be the, probably the first one before you get to South. So, uh, and it's a, a different brand. 7-Eleven uh, has chosen to move forward on, on, on serving uh, uh, the public uh, with, uh, you know, the gasoline opportunity. 
uh, it's still around and until we're told not to uh, use gas driven vehicles but um, um, again uh, going back to the market uh, and uh, putting together something that again we feel that's going to work that's what we don't want to build something that's not going to work and, and stay <coughs> empty so um, uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, again all the parties have worked hard uh, we got something that we can move forward on uh, and uh, we've uh, we've we've had those difficult discussions about you know you know getting the right designs and and circulation and uh, and so on um, uh, I mentioned about the gem um, sonic that's going to be a regional draw so that's that's a huge plus uh, so um, um, we had a we have a site here that's that's decent enough in size and and and, and able to uh, put more than just uh, uh, you know one big uh, one big you know single user so uh, it's I think it's all about the opportunities and, and a variety and so on so uh, again uh, as I mentioned uh, we're excited about this and so <coughs> I think uh, we're at a point where uh, 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 what's being proposed is, is uh, gonna uh, do well in this area. So I'll leave it at that, Mr. Mayor uh, Pro Tem. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah, thank you, Councilmember Sanchez. <laughs> One thing I'd like to just highlight on the um, on this development, similar to In and Out, and it was mentioned the gathering space on the outdoor side of things. If staff can can kind of go over the outdoor space that has been included in these designs. I was about to say that. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I, 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 sorry. Yeah, if you can show it again, the, uh, there's the, um, the outdoor um, dining area on each of the pads. All right. So um, for pads one, two, and three, there are outdoor, di outdoor dining area mm -hmm. off of Bellflower Boulevard. So. As well as indoor dining. So. Mm -hmm. And what's the square footage on each of those? Could you just m mention them? I I was looking for them quickly too, but you're faster than I am. Specifically for the outdoor dining? Yes, um, please. No? Okay. So for pad one, there is a 464 square foot outdoor dining area. For pad two, it's 185 square feet. And for pad three, it's 544 square feet. Perfect, thank you. And then um, just briefly on the comment regarding the, the grocery store, um, today we, we threw the idea out there to the applicant and we'll see, you know, it's on the applicant. I think like my colleagues have mentioned, it is a free market and unfortunately we can't dictate that type of uh, use. Um, that definitely would be an overstep <laughs> on our end, uh, but, but hopefully the applicant heard a little bit of it and the desire for it and who knows we'll you know we'll leave it up to the applicant so um with that i'll conclude my comments and okay. if you like i can one of us can make a motion let or me just make one more comment perfect before you make the motion one more too uh, <laughs> just make an, over, an overall comment about you know um the, the the impression that the city um can dictate what goes into certain areas that's not correct uh, we we encourage development we can we provide the environment for development to come we provide the zoning but we cannot tell developers to you need to have grocery in this corner you need to have uh, car dealers in this corner and this we don't do that just like uh, a, one of the serious misunderstanding is that the city builds homes we don't build homes we can't. We provide the environment so that homes can be built. We are not in the business of building, okay? So I, I wish that we have the magic wand as a city that we can say, oh, Kmart, can you reopen? Estate Brothers, can you reopen? We don't have that. Again, it, it's based on a free market economy. That's how we survive. It's up to the developer to provide the building to entice business to come to their development. That's how it works. And so our, our job is to provide the zoning, to provide the environment so that these businesses will come to the city. All right, that's my comment. Mr. Hamada. Uh, just a quick one. Uh, staff, again, what was the size, the overall size of this building? That building is, I believe, 
8,356 8, square feet. All right, all right. That's, that's, small. that's definitely on the smaller end. Very small. Yeah. All right. Okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Sanchez, it's yours. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Temp. I'd like to uh, make a motion to adopt resolution number 22 60, a resolution approving conditional use permit case number CU 21 03 for three restaurants with drive through components, a fuel station with an accessory of off site alcohol cells for developing on lots that will measure less than 1.5 acres, and development review case number DR 6 21 1208 to allow for the construction of five commercial buildings on properties located at 17617 through 17639 Bellflower Boulevard within the design for development for South Bellflower Commercial Area, also known as DFD, applicant by the applicant Greg James of McKinley Malik Architects, uh, including the two conditions that were revised this evening. 24, 24 and, and 33. 33. Okay. I will second. All right, motion by uh, Council Member Sanchez, seconded by Council Member Amada uh, to approve resolution 22-60 as amended. Uh, roll call, please. Council Member Hamada. Aye. Council Member Sanchez. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Santinez. Aye. All right, Mr. Gold, congratulations. We look forward to the uh, groundbreaking. Whenever it's gonna be, please let us know. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, by the way, staff, thank you for uh, putting the, some of the items on, on a flash drive. That was very helpful. I don't wanna kill more trees now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Are they still here? <laughs> oh, we don't, we don't have quorum. <laughs> we cannot transact business anymore. <laughs> we cannot even approve the consent calendar now. All right, let the record reflect that Mayor Danton and Council Member Coops are, have rejoined the City Council meeting. All right. All right, Mayor. Well, I see the you floor is yours. Thank you. We work hard on that last item. Yes. Well, I see you still have an audience. Well, it was, it was a very exciting meeting. Okay. All right. Okay, I got the easy stuff left, I think. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is a consent calendar. Any recusals or conflicts first? Sonny, any recusals or conflicts? Uh, no conflict. Mr. Hamada? Nothing, nothing, sir. Oops, you got any recusals or conflicts? No, I thought I did, but they said I'm off the hook. You're off the hook. Okay. What about Mr. Sanchez the other? No, no conflicts. Well, I got a conflict on 10E and 10F regarding property conflicts within 500 feet. I want to recuse myself from 10F and 10E. Okay, any items want to be pulled for discussion? No? I would like to, yeah, I guess I'm gonna be the guy today. Uh-oh, uh -oh. uh -oh. Item uh, 10H regarding the 
cannabis education fund for the money coming out of that for the $1,000 towards the mayor's prayer breakfast that's put on by the Bellflower Ministerial Society. Society. So association. Association, I mean. Um, I would like to see that go concurrent annually. And if uh, you colleagues would concur, I'd like to see that go continue. I think you're looking to amend the recommendation yeah. to include in the annual budget on future. Exactly. Future. Okay. Or should we talk to them first in terms of how the mayor's prayer breakfast has been done? Maybe we can help them. That's what this is. I know. So, but in terms of the yeah. process, their process, because I think uh, my understanding is they're not selling, they're not promoting it as they used to be. Mm -hmm. exactly. I think we have our direction. We could yeah. approve the yeah. item tonight, reach out to them, and if, so. if it looks like it's easier to do it this way, we okay. could go through. As anyway. long as the council concurs with your recommendation. Only thing I'm asking. Okay. Because yeah. I was talking to them, so. Mm. Um, it just, I am, every year, and the mayor gets asked to try to round up money for the the mayor's prayer breakfast and and do do certain things to help them out. Um, as we all know, that the city used to do the mayor's prayer breakfast, and during the downturn of the economy, that we chose to to let it go, and then they stepped up to continue it. Um, but whatever works to me is. If that's what we want to do, we can pass this as it is, and, and the next mayor can work on it from here well, on out. Well, no, I mean, actually, <laughs> I'm well, okay. Are you looking? I know. Are you looking? I'm just not going to do it no more. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired of it. <laughs> so I think the, what the mayor's goal was, we'd want to include this in the funding request that we go through annually. On well, the we budget. would like to be yeah. perpetual. Correct. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. So then the, yeah. it would just becomes like yeah. all the perpetual funding requests yeah. that we get. This would be one where they'd submit a letter and. It'd be included in the budget process if that's right. Well, that's what go. I meant. Is that but uh, yeah, for it? I don't. I mean, I'm not sure. Well, what I'm okay with that. But my point here is, I I don't see much promotion, um, okay. the last couple of years as they used to be, mm -hmm. because if I remember correctly, when we used to have it at Sims Park, I mean there were lines, people were buying tickets ahead oh, of time. I see. So, and I I just don't know what happened in between then and now. I'm willing to help them, mm -hmm. but I just want to make sure that well, I think the help we're giving them yeah. is. More than the one thousand dollars. Yeah, that's all I'm getting at. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, I think when it was at Sims Park, it was on a shoestring budget, and it was but pretty cheap full. and a lot it's of donated. Yeah. Well, now it's at the High Dollar mm -hmm. Main Center. Yeah, I know. And the times that we're having right now, as we all know, because, because honestly, I haven't seen any promotion on this. At yeah, all. Yeah. yes. At all. We're open to whatever okay. you want yeah. to. So right. I, I'm. <laughs> I'm okay, I'm okay with the recommendation, but I just want okay. to have a conversation, especially with the staff, uh, okay. with them, to talk with them. Well, this year is pretty good. Yeah, well, well, this, this year, year is set. Them, this so year's set, we'll give them 1000 mm -hmm. and then the next mayor can worry about it. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. I'm okay with the recommendation. Oh, rec okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So you're amending this to make this an, an annual, annual request from okay. the Perpetual. Ministerial Association for funding for the putting on the prayer breakfast for $1,000, right? Okay. As long as you guys are good, I am. What else yeah. do you have, Ray? Something else. That's it. That's all there is. Uh, I'm the only one who's got recusals, so I would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar. Second. Got a motion on the floor by Councilmember Coops and a second by Sanchez. Without objection, that'll be the order with myself recused from 10F and 10E. And modified. And with, yeah, modified 10H as amended. Council reports, guys. Mr. Hamada, you want to go first? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a couple of things quickly. Uh, on the 14th, I was able to attend uh, the Gateway City's Cobb Faith Summit on Homelessness. And uh, there were some presentations, and there was like a, a um, you know, resource expo. This was in Paramount, and uh, our own, uh, you know, Kingdom Causes Bellflower was there. Uh, uh, Chrissy Padilla uh, present, Berkey presented uh, within a panel, and uh, uh, had some uh, really great comments on, on, on situations and uh, 
uh, her thoughts and, uh, you know, how, uh, again, everybody can uh, work together. So um, that went well. And then on the, uh, on the uh, 15th, um, well, first off, I was appointed by the SCAG president <laughs> to be on a subcommittee. Um, this is a racial equity and regional planning. So uh, that combination. Uh, uh, so um, uh, we, had, we had our first meeting and um, uh, we, we just kicked it off. And uh, I'll be talking with staff. There, there was a video that they presented. And I just wanted to maybe uh, run it by staff and maybe it might, might be uh, something future to add uh, for not maybe uh, just individually for us or, or possibly for the public. So uh, uh, we'll have that discussion. So and that's it. And uh, um, I'm looking forward to some more stuff with the uh, uh, subcommittee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Amata. Council Member Coops. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to uh, ask that we adjourn this meeting in, uh, for someone that's uh, very important in our community, Helen Lean Thompson. She was born in Ireton, Iowa, on April 26, 1926, passed away September 9, 2022, at the age of 96 years old. Helen moved to Bellflower as a small child from Iowa with her parents, Bill and Olive Lean. She was a proud graduate of Excelsior High School, where she met her husband, Wayne Thompson. She was an elementary school teacher for Bellflower Unified School District for over 30 years and retired from Ernie Pyle Elementary School. Helen was active in Bellflower community as a member of the Bellflower Kiwanis Club, the Masonic Lodge, Presbyterian Church of Bellflower, Brethren Church, and the Bellflower Chamber of Commerce. Helen was preceded in death by her husband, Wayne, and leaves behind a loving family, including children Mark, Bill, Janet, and Ann, as well as countless friends who benefited greatly from knowing her. Our deepest sympathies and heartfelt condolences go out to the entire Thompson family. This family who was so active in our town, Wayne Thompson, her husband, which I knew very well, uh, was the first principal for Somerset High School way back in the 60s. Uh, during World War II, he was a commander of a destroyer for U.S. Navy. He was a teacher here in the school district. He had his own store at one time here in Bellflower, and then he continued to have an antique store up in Big Bear. And uh, he was the president, uh, the manager of the Chamber of Commerce. So this guy could do anything, and his wife supported him and all this th stuff. Wayne died here a couple years ago, Helen just recently. But I just wanted to recognize part of what Bellflower our town is built on the shoulders of the people like this that took their time and their talents and put it to good use. And that's why I wanted to dedicate our evening uh, adjournment to them. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Coops. Council Member Sanchez. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just want to, again, highlight the car show. I think it was a phenomenal event, but um, that's it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing that, uh, Mr. Coops. As you know, we all know her, uh, we knew Ellen, so thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Sanchez. Mayor Pro Tem, Sonny Santanias. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to thank um, the Economic Development Department for um, sponsoring the um, Emprendedores program. Uh, th this is one of the um, kind of, I don't think it's publicized as much as we need to. Uh, <laughs> it, it's a training program for uh, would be business owners. If you want to own a business, uh, learn how to fund a business, how to grow a business. Uh, you can learn this program, this thing, so a program called uh, Emprendedores. And also, if you wanted to learn in English, uh, you can log into 37oaks.com. So uh, I would really encourage you, if you are thinking of going into business or want to grow your business, please take advantage of this program. And secondly, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, last meeting I, um, I asked staff to have a presentation about the developments that we have in Bellflower. And sure enough, a, uh, a constituent asked me when it's going to happen. So I'd like to remind staff if we can do it one of your future meeting meetings uh, because we have so many things going on in the city and we'd like to inform them in terms of these new developments. Just like tonight, we approved this major project as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's something that, that's worth sharing. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Santa Inez. And uh, with that, I'd like to thank the Lions Club. They're the entity that actually puts on the car show with the City of Bellflower partner partnering 
with them. Um, they got through a nice event, brought a lot of people downtown. Um, apparently no problems that I know of, no reporting. I don't think any of us got a problems the next day. Um, it went really well, and I just want to give the Lions Club cooties. Anytime you put that many volunteers trying to do something that big, there's always a chance of something going south on you. But uh, kudos for the Lions Club. Okay. What, Larry Weehage, who was here earlier, um, really is the heart and soul of that event. When the boulevard is completed at the end of the day, he'll pick up much of the trash. He comes by early Sunday morning, like 4 a.m., and personally goes from one end of the boulevard all the way to the 91 freeway, making sure every wrapper, every item is picked up. The boulevard actually is cleaner after he finishes it with than when we started with it. And I just wanted to point that out. Larry just does an outstanding job making sure that we have no embarrassment on the boulevard. And I just thought not many people know that what he goes through. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. At this time, we're going to uh, recess to closed session. Uh, we, due to some uh, scheduling conflicts, we had to put the closed session on the back end of the meeting. So this is pretty much it. So Mr. Stewart, can you read our closed session items into the record? Yeah, please? this is uh, Conference of Legal Counsel on Threat of Litigation. And there's one case and it involves a claim submitted by Luster Electric Company on September 21st. Okay, does anybody have any recusals, conflicts? No? Okay. Is there anybody in attendance who would like to make pu public comment on the closed session item? Not seeing any. Okay, we're going to recess the closed session now. Are we recording? Okay. Okay, let the record reflect that we've reconvened from closed session and there was no reportable action. And with that, I'm going to call for adjournment at 1015 in memory of Helen Thompson to our next regular meeting of the City of Bellflower City Council at 530 p.m. Monday, October 10th, 22.